Hey, what's up, my dudes? Deveorn here, at long last, bringing you our armor and miscellaneous guide to Baldur's Gate. In this video, we're going to talk about every single armor item in the game, as well as every single belt, helmet, pair of gloves, boots, ring, and amulet, etc. that you can equip in Baldur's Gate 2. We're going to talk about every single item in alphabetical order from start to finish. We're going to talk about what's good, what's crap, and what I think you should be using and what I think you would find fun by using in this amazing game. Just a couple caveats, as always, before we get started, this guide is going to be based around the rule set we play at Twitch TV on my stream, which is no save, no reload, so if the main character dies, it's game over, back to BG1. We play on insane difficulty with double damage turned on, so enemies, spells, abilities, and weapons will be hitting much, much harder. We play with SCS, Ascension, and Rogue Rebalancing with all the components installed and maximized for extra difficulty and challenge. And we also have a couple components of the tweaks to make things more interesting as well. All in all, this rule set is going to make us take a lot more damage, make the game a lot more interesting in my personal opinion that being said 99 percent of what i say can and will apply to your unmodded vanilla runs as well but the most important thing to take away and remember is that this guide is a guide to help this is a recommendation but you can play anything you want in this game and you're going to do just fine with it you might struggle here and there but it's okay there is nothing in this game that is not viable so the rating system we have set up is going to be from RP tier, which is an item that is absolute garbage and only useful for roleplay. C tier is item that if you have nothing better, you might as well use it. B tier is items that are situationally okay or otherwise not great. A tier are items that are situationally really useful or otherwise decent. S tier items are items that are quite good or situationally amazing. S plus items are items that I recommend always taking and using. And S plus plus is reserved for the two items that I think you should never leave without because they're so strong or so fun to play with and enjoyable. Now, there's one thing I did want to talk about real quick before we get into every single item and go through the guide itself. I wanted to talk about each of the base armors real quick and go over what they do and how the modifiers work. So in this game, your AC base is 10. You start out a 10 armor class and you want that to be as low as possible because the way Thacko uh, works, you roll a dice if you're trying to hit something, you add the enemy's armor class to that roll, and if that roll is higher than your Thacko, you hit. So you want your AC to be low, so when that gets added to their roll, they have a much lower chance of hitting you. It may sound a little strange at first, but basically, the lower your armor class, the better. So when we look at this leather armor, for example, it sets your base armor to 8. That's what this is saying right here. However, it has modifiers versus certain types of damage. In this case, piercing and missile. So what this is saying is you have 8 armor class versus any attack in the game and 10 versus piercing and missile. So if an enemy is shooting a bow at you, for example, with an arrow, you're not getting a bonus from this item. And that's important to keep in mind as we talk about these items and go through them is that armor in this game is so much more than just the base armor you're getting. You're getting modifiers, sometimes you're getting resistances, sometimes there's other passive bonuses, etc, etc, and we'll talk about those as we go through the list here. So the first armor we have here is just your basic leather armor, basically usable by everybody except people that can't use armor at all, like shapeshifters, kensei, monk, and mages. As we just mentioned, sets your base AC to 8 with uh, a worse modifier versus piercing and missile. Not good, obviously. If you have better, definitely want to use it. Up next, we have Studded Leather, which is going to be a bit better. This is going to set your base AC to 7. However, you also have additional modifiers versus Slashing, Piercing, and Missile. So we have 5 AC versus Slashing, 6 versus Piercing and Missile. So this armor is getting a little bit better in regards to its modifiers. So for example, if we're being hit by a crushing attack, it's going to be base AC 7, 5 versus Slashing, 6 for Piercing and Missile. Very simple and easy to read, right? But it is something you do want to keep in mind. These modifiers do make a big difference. This is usable by basically everybody, just as before, except for Avengers, who can only use leather armor for some hilarious reason. Up next, we have Chainmail Armor. Chainmail armor is one of the few armors in the game that is actually going to give you a much worse penalty versus certain types of attacks. Normally you have a base AC of 5, now you have a 3 versus slashing, which is good, and then you have 7 versus crushing, which is bad. And these modifiers are going to be basically applying to almost every version of this armor. So if you have a chainmail plus 1, chainmail plus 2, 3, 4, etc, etc, you're still going to get a big penalty versus enemies who are attacking with crushing. They're going to have a much higher chance of hitting you with a crushing attack versus a slashing attack. And right now we're looking at just a regular, plain, basic chainmail. 
and you're seeing a four FACO or AC difference between these two modifiers, which really is, like I said before, it can make a big difference. For example, if you're attacking Drizzt, he's using a Chainmail plus four. If you're using a crushing weapon, you're going to have a much higher chance of hitting him, and vice versa. If you're wielding this, you're going to have a much higher chance of being hit first crushing. Up next, we have Slint Mail. Slint Mail is one of the few, if only, I think it's actually the only arm in the game that actually gives you a bonus modifier versus crushing. You start out with a base AC of 4, 3 versus piercing and missile, and 2 versus crushing. Notice before, Chain Mail has a bonus versus slashing, Slint Mail has a bonus versus crushing. Almost every armor in this game is typically going to have a bonus and a uh, penalty. However, there are some exceptions once we get to the heavier plate mails coming up here. So if you're looking for something that's going to help you against crushing enemies, you typically want to put on a splint mail, assuming, again, you don't have a better plate mail. Up next, we have plate mail. Plate mail is going to be an AC base of three with a zero for slashing. So you get an extra three bonus versus slashing attacks. And finally, we have the full plate mail sets your base armor to one a negative three versus slashing and negative two versus piercing and missile. And this is huge. So now enemies are actually getting a straight up penalty to their role when attacking you because this armor is that strong and that's good. Notice that full plate, plate mail, uh, studded leather, and leather have no bonus whatsoever to crushing. The only crushing modifiers you're going to see are on chain mail and... Um, Splint Mail. Splint Mail is going to give you a bonus. Chain Mail is going to give you a penalty. The reason I bring this up is because most enemies in this game are going to be using slashing attacks against you. It is by far the most common type of attack, quickly followed by piercing and missile with crushing being way down at the bottom. For whatever reason, most enemies in this game are going to be using a sword, whether it's a long sword or a two-handed sword or a bastard sword, whatever, whatever. And most magical creatures in this game are equipped with an invisible claw in the Infinity Engine, and these will almost always strike as a slashing attack. So typically, as armors go, you want to have something that's going to give you a high bonus for slashing. And that's not always the case. If you're fighting golems, for example, they're going to be doing crushing damage, they're going to be hitting like trucks, so you don't want something that's going to give you a high bonus for slashing. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really make that much of a difference anyways outside of Baldur's Gate 1, where Thacko and AC really, really matters. In Baldur's Gate 2, there's some certain setups you can do that will get you a very high amount of armor with modifiers to be able to avoid attacks, but you're going to run into enemies who have critical strike, etc., etc. So generally speaking, in Baldur's Gate 1, the higher AC, the better. In Baldur's Gate 2... I'm going to be interested in a lot more than just armor class. For example, armor the heart is arguably the highest AC item in the game you can use outside of drow full plate plus five, which will dissolve outside of the underdark. But I almost never use it because it doesn't have really anything else that I'm interested in aside from AC. And we'll talk about that as we go down the list here. But like I said, just wanted to give a basic overview of how Thacko works, how AC works, and what you should be looking out for in your armors. Now, we're going to be going in alphabetical order for all the armors, and then we're going to move on to boots, belts, etc., etc. So the first item here is Abishai Hide. This is an S-plus tier item from Rogue Rebalancing that drops during the Chosen of Syric encounter by the Barbarian character. This gives you a base AC of 4, typically whatever, who cares if you're a Barbarian, you're getting hit by everything any every ways. But what makes this armor so damn good is it gives you 15% resistance to slashing, piercing, crushing, and missile damage. And this stacks with Hardiness, this will stack with Dwarven Defensive Stance, this will stack with Defender of East Haven, this will stack with your passive damage reduction that you get from being a Barbarian or a Dwarven Defender, this will stack with the damage reduction you get from Hell, um, your Hell Trials and Late Throne of Ball with Ascension, and you can basically hit 100% damage reduction on a Barb or a Dwarven Defender pretty easily and get damn close to it on any other fighter ethos. For example, if I was taking Corrigan in my party and I was playing a mage and obviously I can't use this as a mage, I would slap this on him, give him Hardiness, Defender of East Haven, and now he has 75% damage reduction to everything. And then you can combine that with other items to make that even better or situationally more useful. For example, you can use the helmet that gives you extra crushing damage reduction, which we'll talk about later. But the most important thing about this item is the damage reduction itself, which stacks and scales insanely well. It scales well early on, it scales well in the mid game, it scales well late. Well, obviously you don't get this till late, but damage reduction in general, the more you have, the better it is. It scales linearly, if you think about it, right? So if you have 50% damage reduction, you're cutting your damage received by 50%. 
If you gain another 25, putting you at 75, you could basically think of that as yet another 50% damage reduction of the damage you're taking because of the way it scales and the way it works. So every little bit more you have is absolutely incredible. Can't say enough great things about this item. Highly recommend it. Super amazing. Take it and use it. Up next, we have Adventurer's Robe. This is a C-tier garbage item. If you have absolutely nothing better to slap on your mages, by all means, do so. But how often are you going to be attacked with crushing attacks? I mean, never. Save for its petrification, and Polymorph is quite possibly the worst save in the entire game. For some hilarious reason, even a handful of spells that will do petrification and Polymorph do not actually require you to save versus petrification and Polymorph. For some reason, those are co uh, coded as save versus spells, making this extra useless. And considering crushing attacks are usually being caused by golems, flesh golems in BG1, ogre berserkers in BG1, and in Baldur's Gate 2 you have a variety of golems. Chances are if you're getting hit by a golem, this isn't going to save you. You're fucking dead. Shit item all the way. As soon as you get better, drop it. Up next is Aegir's Hide. This is an S tier item, very close to S plus in my opinion, but I would say that this is an item that you're going to use early and eventually you're going to drop when you replace it with better items, so I'm going to leave it at S tier. Aegir's Hide can be found very early in Baldur's Gate 2. It's sold by the Adventurer's Mart. I think it's about 10k um, base uh, cost, and then obviously that will go down or up if you are hideously unattractive and have a low rep, or if you're very handsome and have a high rep. What makes this armor so good isn't the 3 AC. Like we said before, I typically don't look at items just for the armor class. It's the fact that you're getting 15% resistance to cold, fire, and acid, which will then stack with your helmet or a shield or a variety of other items and spells, which will allow you to go well above the 100 and start regening HP every time you get hit by set attacks, and immunity to confusion. Immunity to confusion especially is super nice to have on the main character, I cannot tell you how many times my character has gotten confused, be it chaos or regular confusion spell. Something just goes out, and now I have no control of my character for a handful of rounds, and that almost always results in him getting popped. You could also give this to somebody else in your party if you're particularly worried about them getting confused. Maybe they have low saves. There are a lot of uses for this item. It's a really, really good item. I highly recommend it. I take it and use it all the time on my characters. If they're thieves, barbs, even something that can be immune to confusion, the resistances alone are still quite good and worth taking for. Up next is Onkeg Plant Mail. This item is typically only used in Baldur's Gate 1, but sometimes you'll end up using it in Baldur's Gate 2 as well. I don't even remember where you get it in Baldur's Gate 2. I think it drops off something stupid. Um, this will set your AC to 1 with minus 2 versus slashing and 0 versus piercing and missile. This is going to be, on first glance, this looks like it's the same as full plate because it has the same 1 AC base. But in actuality, uh, full plate has better slashing modifiers and better modifiers versus piercing and missile. The reason you use this armor is because you can't use anything better. This is like something that Vaconia would use in Baldur's Gate 1 because she doesn't have the strength to use anything more. However, just because this requires almost no strength to use and doesn't weigh as much, it still has a huge amount of restrictions. Archers won't be able to use it, barbers won't be able to use it, etc, etc. So, it's okay, but you won't end up using it much at all. Up next, we have Armor of the Deep Knight. I don't think I've ever equipped this item once in my entire life of playing this game, and I've been playing this game for way too damn long. It's an AC of 3 with 1 verse slashing and 2 verse piercing and missile. Um... Whoopty fucking do. Stutter leather plus four. Who the hell cares? Garbage. Don't even bother. Uh, C tier all the way. Up next, Armor of Faith. I think I've only ever used this once. And I think I gave it to Vicky. Um, this is an item that can only be acquired if you are a cleric. And you're doing Sir Sarles's quest. And um, there's an option to select for a clerical reward, and you'll end up getting this from whichever temple you're affiliated with, be it Talos or a Monitor or Helm or whatever. This is a um, this is a splint mail. It's going to give you a little bit of an extra bonus versus crushing, and uh, give you an extra one save all. So it's split mail plus three with one saves. You can get this pretty damn early on in the game, requiring almost no effort whatsoever. Again, requires very low strength, so you can absolutely use this and slap this on Vicky. I think that's a perfectly decent use early on. But otherwise, really not much use for it. I think this is the highest uh, splint mail uh, in the game. 
which sucks. That's saying a lot how easy it is to get crushing bonuses in this game, but uh, this is still B tier, not really all that useful. You can use it on Vicky early, but you have to be a cleric to even get it in the first place, so not all that great. Up next, we have Armor of Missile Attraction. I don't know why this here. I thought I removed this from the list because I don't plan on talking about cursed items, but uh, here it is. This is a uh, leather, uh, studded leather plus two that also gives you a massive penalty against missile attacks, basically guaranteeing that you're going to get hit by every arrow in the game. Uh, I don't think I need to say why you don't need to want to use that. Up next, we have Armor of the Heart. This is the highest armor class item in the game outside of the big metal unit that can be used. Um, on the surface throughout the whole game. You'll acquire this item in the Underdark when you sacrifice something to one of the uh, the Demon Knight altar over in, looking at the camera, the west side of the Underdark. Along with the uh, two-handed sword, uh, you fight the Demon Knights, they will end up dropping this. This is a full plate plus three, which gives you a massive juicy minus six versus slashing and minus five versus piercing missile. This item is perfectly serviceable. I have used it more than once. However, by the time you get to the Underdark, you typically have items that you're going to be more interested in that I'll be talking about later, later on. And for that reason, I basically leave this at A tier. And even then, that's kind of a stretch. I will absolutely slap this on Keldorn or Animan or some of my uh, companions occasionally if I'm running a really heavy martial party where I want a lot of people to have a very heavy full plate but once we get to some of the other items you'll understand why i'm not rating this so highly even though it is arguably the highest ac item in the game up next we have armor the viper this is an interesting item this is a uh studded leather gives you plus five uh excuse me a studded leather plus five that also gives you a saver's death bonus um excuse me a saver's death penalty um I'm not entirely sure, again, why I even have this here. I absolutely hate items that give you drawbacks. They're usually extremely detrimental. Saver's Death is one of the most important saves in the game. Saver's Spell is the only thing that's arguably more important. With Saver's Death, you're going to be fighting Planetars that can decapitate, Baylors that can decapitate, Liches who are going to be using Touch of or um, Finger of Death uh, fairly regularly. Uh, there are going to be a lot of enemies who are going to be forcing you to save versus death, and when you fail a save versus death, typically you die. It will also do the same thing for poison, so when you're dealing with spiders and wyverns, etc., you don't want to have penalties for save versus death. You just don't. It's bad. It's not good. C tier item. You can absolutely use this, but again, there are so many better things you could be using. Up next, we have the Ashen Scales. Uh, you'll get this over in... Um... It starts with a U. And ends in hills. Umar Hills, that's the word. Uh, this is another Splint Mail plus two. Uh, pretty unimpressive, doesn't really give you much. Um, if you have nothing better, by all means equip it, but it's not great. Up next, we have the uh, Assyrian Elven Chain. This is the uh, Blade Singer that has been upgraded by uh, Sespinar, I believe. And this will give you immunity to normal weapons and have a base eight, uh, AC of 2, and you can cast with it. This is arguably the highest AC item you can get as a spellcaster in this game. If you're a fighter mage, thief mage, etc., etc., there's absolutely nothing wrong with using this item. I would recommend it specifically for your uh, bard companion if you have one, like Herdalise, because then they can pop protection from magical weapons, and now they're immune to both normal and all magical weapons, which basically means they're immune to all physical damage for four rounds. For that reason, this is actually actually quite useful in certain situations the thing that sucks is you don't get this till literally thrown a ball and by then most enemies are going to be either dying in two seconds or killing you in two seconds very few are going to be swapping to normal weapons although there are a handful of enemies who do have both either way this is a perfectly serviceable item is absolutely useful at times and obviously if you have hair to lease in your party you don't want to give them robo vecna or something better i would say this is an a tier item up next, we have the big metal unit, kind of a meme item, but still fun to play with, absolutely. You can acquire this by giving the bronze, golden, and silver pantaloons slash pantalettes to some gnome or dwarf whose name escapes me and late thrown a ball. And he will give you this item along with a handful of weapons. This item gives you the highest AC in the game. However, it turns into a giant golem, making it basically impossible for you to move in 90% of this game. 
It also gives you immunity to backstab, disables all abilities other than attacking, and gives you a tiny bit of magic resistance. It also gives you massive modifiers versus slashing, piercing, and missile, which are quite nice. And basically, if you're wearing this coupled with a shield or a couple other items, you're basically uh, invincible when it comes to getting auto-attacked. That being said, enemies can still hit you on a 20, so Critical Strike still ignores this completely. And again, losing a lot of other abilities and given the other restrictions, I don't really think of this item as anything other than a meme. That being said, the items that you get with it, the weapons, uh, the Agonizer Scorcher especially, combined with improved haste, will do more damage than anything else in this game. It's absolutely disgusting how much damage you can put out. It's a really fun item to play with. I almost never use it, ever. But other noticeable thing is this could be used by basically everyone. It doesn't matter what class you are, you can slap this item on him. You can slap this on uh, a monk. You can slap this on all sorts of things. It is absolutely super fun to play with, and I definitely recommend it, but I just typically don't use it because it's it's kind of breaking the fourth wall a little hard there. Here we have the Blade Singer chain. Uh, this is the one that upgrades that we were just talking about a moment ago. This will drop off the... Uh, Dragon and Soldan, or not Soldan SLR. Yeah, Soldan SLR. I can't remember the names of all these stupid elf cities in my games. Freaking elves. Anyways, this is just going to be um, a nice little item that gives you decent AC. You can use it while spellcasting B tier. At this point, you should be using better, but you can absolutely use it. Up next is Blue Dragon Plate. This item is special because it gives you 90% electrical resistance. Unfortunately, this drops off a dragon that uses electrical abilities. This drops off a Bazagal. You can take your scales and make this item, and yes, there is more electric damage after a Bazagal, but... God, it would sure be nice to have it for him, wouldn't it? Anyways, this gives you 90% electrical resistance, which when combined with a helmet or something else will easily allow you to cap. There is still plenty of lightning damage to come, especially for the final battle, so it is not useless whatsoever. I would say it's A tier. There are definitely items that I would prefer to use over it, but it is absolutely still very serviceable. It's going to be an eight, uh, full plate plus two, basically, which is going to give you minus five versus slashing and minus four versus piercing and missile. Perfectly nice uh, modifiers there. Up next, we have the Cortala family armor. This is one of the few armors that I actually give S tier. Um, and it's quite good. Um, the thing is, as a stalker, stalkers are heavily limited, and most, honestly, ranger classes are limited in what they can use for some hilarious reason. Stalkers, archers, and beastmasters are all heavily limited, especially beastmaster and what they can wear. This armor will come with Valigar. Obviously, only he's able to use it. It gives you 25% resistance to fire, 25% resistance to acid, and 25 magic damage reduction. You can think of this as magic damage reduction as opposed to just resistance. The important thing to keep in mind is that applies to raw magical damage. And that's going to be magic missile, uh, force missiles, horde welting, things like that. A lightning bolt does not get reduced by this. Um, a coat of cold does not get reduced by this. This is only raw magic damage that this works for. The acid and fire, however, do work for the others. Fire is arguably... I wouldn't say arguably. It is absolutely the most common source of elemental damage in this game, bar none. Uh, every high-level wizard is going to be dropping a comet and a dragon's breath on top of you, and they are going to do an absolutely enormous amount of damage. The thing is, this alone is not going to be enough to stop that from killing you if you're taking double damage um, from insane difficulty. You're going to want to combine this with a helmet or a shield or something else that's going to give you additional fire resistance, but it is very, very nice to have. I don't think I ever replace this on Valigar. Um, unless I'm going to be giving him Abishai Hide, but even then, like, it, th this item is just super, super, super useful for him. I typically keep it on him for the entire game, and for that reason, it's S tier, in my opinion. Not S+, plus because you can absolutely replace it with other stuff, but, uh, very, very useful item. Very, very good. Strong early, strong late. That's what really... The, res the resistances especially are really what makes items in this game because they combine with other things. Obviously, you can combine armor class with other things, but not many. So, S tier all the way. Up next, we have the Crimson Chain. This is a chainmail plus five. I don't like chainmail because it gives you a bonus versus crushing. However, as we talked about before, most enemies are not going to be doing crushing. However, if you are wearing chainmail and fighting golems, prepare to get your butt pounded. Then again, golems seem to hit everything anyways because they have 20-something strength each. So it doesn't really make too much of a difference. But that being said, it's okay. C tier still. If you have better, you're going to want to use it. Up next, we have the Dark Elven Chain. Um... This is a uh, chainmail. Why is this here? I 
don't even know where this comes from. I, fi- I think this might be a Black Pits item. Um, anyway, this is a Dark Elven chain, apparently, that is not like the Drow chain that will be destroyed, nor is it the one from Brogue Rebalancing that gives you an extra spellcasting boost. I don't know uh, where this is where this is from, but whatever. Here it is. It looks okay. Um, spellcasting not being disabled, so you can basically think of it as another Elven chain, but slightly better because it gives you extra bonuses down here, and again, a penalty versus crushing, just something to keep in mind. Up next, we have Dark Mail. Dark Mail uh, plus three will give you fire resistance 20%. Normally, I am all in favor of items that give you elemental resistance. However, this one gives you too little, and the AC modifiers are too garbage to begin with. There are a lot better items that are going to give you better resistances and better AC. Granted, this can be used by more things, but you still can't use it as an archer and a stalker. So, I mean, what are you going to use this on? There's no point. It's garbage. C tier all the way. Up next, we have Delver's Plate, another garbage item. This item, I don't think I've ever equipped once. It does have a nice save or spell, plus two, which, which can absolutely be useful. But I typically find the other items to be more reliable and more useful overall. It does give you a bonus for slashing, however, since it is plate mail. Up next, we have Doom Plate, another item I don't think I've ever equipped once in my life. Giving you an extra bonus for slashing. C tier all the way. Absolute garbage. No reason to even talk about it. This item exists to be sold after you acquire it in uh, spell hold. Up next, we have Drow Addy Chain plus five. This is the chain mail that's going to be dropping off the drow that will be destroyed upon going to the surface. This is basically an elven chain plus five. It's going to set your AC to zero, no uh, spell casting uh, penalty, and it's going to give you a slightly worse AC versus crushing. But by the time you're doing this, who the hell cares? B tier item, I typically don't even equip this for the most part. I'd rather have the robes on my characters or um, a different chainmail used entirely. Up next, we have Drow Chainmail. This is the one that's going to be dropped by the Chosen of Seric Encounter. That is quite good. This item can be used on the surface. It will also increase your spellcasting speed by one and give you 5% magic resistance with a base AC of four. So while the other chain mails are going to be giving you much more AC, this will increase your uh, spellcasting speed and give you a little MR. And those two, even without the MR, the spellcasting speed is huge. This means protection for magical weapons goes off instantly. This means stone skin goes off instantly. This will stack with amulet of power. This will, uh, it is so incredibly useful and noticeable having spellcasting boosts in this game. Obviously, you can't stack this with Vecna because this is an armor item, but it is incredibly good. I will almost always give this to uh, Aerie or uh, Imowen, Nalia. Anyone in my party that is capable of using this item, will, it will always be equipped because it is that damn useful. I'm going to give this an S+. plus. Might be slightly overrating it, but there really isn't anything better other than Vecna for those characters. If you are a caster that is capable of using this item, it should absolutely be on your list. Up next, we have uh, the Drow Elven Chain. This is the one that drops in the Underdark. I think this is the one that drops in um, uh, TOB. I'm not 100% sure, though. Uh, This will also give you... um, the bonus to MR and the one speed factor off all spells. This is absolutely worth swapping to and using when you acquire it again for the same reasons the other one is. This one unfortunately can only be used in the Underdark, but is still incredibly useful. Highly recommended. A tier all the way. Up next is Drow Full Plate plus five. I will occasionally swap to this, but typically I don't because I don't really give a shit all that much. This is going to give you a very high AC versus slashing piercing and missile in the underdark however even though it's a full plate plus five you'll notice that full plate regular would have given um better modifiers for certain things if it really was a true full plus five but modifiers are still good minus seven versus basically everything but crushing absolutely serviceable and useful if you're running a heavy martial combat uh, a heavy martial party i would definitely recommend equipping this on at least one or two people up next we have in kendu's full plate you're going to be acquiring this in acquiring this and throwing a ball this is a very useful item mostly for the immunity to backstab this is actually very very handy because there are going to be a lot of assassins i wouldn't say a lot but a handful of thieves and throwing a ball who are character uh categorized as assassins on double damage and having a time seven multiplier assassins do absolutely ludicrous amounts of damage i have seen mazzy with 160 hit points explode in one backstab I remember her taking 195 damage in um, in M. Catherine. It was an absolute joke, and I was pissed off for at least two days. 
immunity to backstab is very nice. Very, very useful. And giving it to one of your fighters is exceptional. Even with hardiness, backstabs do a ridiculous amount of damage. This also gives you MR, and it gives you the same modifiers as Armor of the Heart. Very, very good item. Uh, I would still say it's situational, though. Um, A tier, borderline S tier. Up next, we have Falarain's Plate. Uh, this is just a crappy plate mail. C tier all the way. Absolutely no reason to use it when you have uh, when you have better uh, armors in the game. Firecam full plate armor. This is the item only used by Keldorn. This is a full plate plus one that also gives free action, that also gives plus one to saves. This is kind of useful. I will use this on Keldorn for certain fights, and I'll use this on Keldorn for a little bit. Typically, I would rather have him wearing Fur Crag's armor or something else, which we'll talk about in just a little bit here. But this item is very serviceable early, and it can be useful for certain fights and situations where you know enemies are going to be throwing a barrage of spells at you. In which case, this will free action will absolutely come in handy. Just keep in mind, I don't like free action at all, because when you cast Improved Haste on somebody who has free action, they don't get the haste, nor the extra attacks, which really sucks. And since you can't swap armor in combat, you kind of need to know what's happening and what's going to happen before you actually equip it and use it. For that reason, I think it's situational B tier. Gorgon Plate, this is one of the best armor items in the game in my opinion. This is an S plus tier item. This is an item that I will always have equipped on somebody. Um... If I'm playing with fighters in my party. This item gives you 15% fire resistance and acid. It gives you a base AC of 1. But an absolutely massive minus 7 versus slashing. This is the highest modifier in the game versus slashing. You can compare it to drow full plate plus 5. Which also gives minus 7 versus slashing. And again this isn't a minus 7 bonus. This is your AC is negative 7 when you're being attacked by enemies. That is huge. Since, again, I mentioned before, slashing is the most common source of um, physical damage you're going to be taking in this game. This is an absolutely great item. It also looks sweet, and that's one thing we haven't talked about yet. The aesthetics of items, in my opinion, are far more important than their stats. And this is a beautiful green color. It matches my eyes, brings out the color, and my... Uh, it's just 10 out of 10. Great item. S plus all the way. Highly recommend using it. Again, you may not look at this at all. And you may look at the minus one, you're just like, oh, it just gives you a little bit of resistances. Minus seven versus slashing is actually quite a bit. That's more than, and Kiddus, that's more than um, uh, Armor of the Heart, etc., etc. Great item. It doesn't give you a bonus for piercing and missile, but again, slashing, by far the most common source of damage. Up next is Grandmaster's Armor. This is going to drop off um, Gromnir's Encounter and throw in a ball. This is going to be a leather armor that gives you minus one versus slashing, zero versus piercing and missile. And it will double your movement rate. I think this is actually a studded leather, right? Yeah, it's studded leather. So, um, Avengers can't use it, right? Yeah. So, there's a couple classes that can't use it, but almost everybody can. The double movement rate is okay. This will absolutely stack with Paws of the Cheetah, etc., etc. But it, even though it says double movement rate, it's only doubling your base movement. You're not going to be able to stack this with Cheetah in haste and go ten times faster. It's not that good. It is still fun and okay to use, but... I really don't recommend it. You have to have a really good reason for using this, in my opinion. Definitely B tier. Up next is Hide Armor. I only included it because I wanted to actually talk about every armor in the game that wasn't just your generic plus one, plus two. This wasn't in the original Baldur's Gate. This was something added with Baldur's Gate 2. It is basically slightly better than leather, but it also gives you thieving penalties, and it gives you worse uh, modifiers for piercing a missile just like leather. This is a garbage item. And there aren't even hot magical hide armors in this game. There aren't. There's like like one or two they added to Siege Dragon Spear. Aegir's Hide, even though it says it's Aegir's Hide, it's not considered a hide armor. It's not going to have the crappy modifiers or it's piercing and missile, etc. Garbage item, C tier all the way. There's no honestly, this is an RP item. I take that back. This is for role play. If you are role playing, if you are an orc thief for whatever reason, and you have three wisdom and two end because you want to role play as a dumbass orc, then this is the item for you. Otherwise, get it the hell out of here. Up next, we have the human flesh. This is the main coat that I talk about on my stream all the time. This is an S plus borderline S plus plus tier item, which is absolutely god tier. This item will give you plus four to all saves. All saves plus four. 20% MR, bonus to move silently, and a crappy armor class base of 3 and 5 versus piercing a missile. I will use this armor every single chance I get in this game because it is so good. Having plus 4 to all saves is absolutely nutty. By the time you get this, especially if you're a dwarf, good god, the bonuses are so good. 
you're able to hit negative 20 saving throws on certain characters by using this item. Uh, Corgan, it's absolutely great on. Uh, Dwarven Defenders, Barbarians, any Thief class, Thief Ethos. Uh, one thing that does, uh, one caveat that does come with this, you cannot use it as neutral or good. You have to be evil in order to get, get this item and use this item. Uh, to get this item, you have to get the uh human skin from the tanner you have to kill adelon and she drops blood and you take these two items to a gentleman in umar hills and he crafts it for you so this is a late game item however but once you get it it is just absolutely insanely good mr at this stage of the game uh the more you have the better you can easily get 50 percent magic resistance by combining this with ring of gax uh, a good necklace and the hell trials um super strong item saving throws mr can't say enough great things about it. And it does make your character look pink. And that is just 10 out of 10. Great item. S+, plus, maybe even S++, plus plus, but super, super strong. Up next, we have the Janssen Adventure Wear. This is an item that can only be used by Jan. It is extremely stylish. However, it must be dry cleaned. There is a dry cleaner in Baldur's Gate 1, but there is not one in Baldur's Gate 2. If you're playing with Baldur's Gate Trilogy, you can take this item to Baldur's Gate and get it dry cleaned. However, it is not cheap. And sometimes they end up giving you somebody else's cloak instead because that happens all the time at dry cleaner. So do be careful about that if you're playing with the Trilogy mod. This gives you 25% damage reduction, uh, which is quite nice. However, it's on Yawn and Yawn only. And if you're being hit without Stone Skin or Mirror Image on Yawn, chances are you're going to get fucking one shot anyways because they were able to break through your defenses. It's probably a Planetar that's hitting you or an Addy Golem or a Dragon or something absolutely insanely lethal. And this isn't going to save you. However, early on in the game, if you're not paying attention because you're an idiot like me and reading chat, then this 25% damage reduction may absolutely save Yon's life. Uh, this is B tier. There's a ton of better items you can be using on Yon, but it's absolutely fun. And again, very stylish. So I'm giving it a B tier. Up next, we have the Jester's Chain. This is one of the biggest slaps of the face in the entire fucking game. It's called the Jester's Chain, right? Use it on a Jester or other bard, but guess what? It disables spellcasting. What a complete fucking joke of an item. It pisses me off. I hate items that are designed for certain classes that completely invalidate the class. It's like, hey, I got a mage robe here for you, but you can't spell cast with it. Hey, I got a sword here for you, but every time you use it, you go insane and can't fucking do anything. Absolute RP, RP tier item, garbage item, pisses me off just looking at it, get it off my screen. Garage is life and death. I don't think I've ever bought or used this before in my life. This is another item that's sold out of the Adventurer's Mart. It's a leather armor plus three. whoop de fucking do Garbage. Don't ever use it. Knave's Robe. Uh, this is an item that I will use. Uh, I wouldn't say frequently, but sometimes in Baldur's Gate 1 until I get a uh, Robe of the Arc Magi. This will give you a bonus for slashing attacks, which is nice, and a bonus for save versus death. Still whatever. C tier all the way. The robes of the elemental resistances. Uh, each one is going to be 20, cold, electrical, and fire. I don't think I've ever equipped or used these in my life, which I feel like I should considering how often my mages die to these spells, but considering this is all you get and there's so many better ones out there, not great. C tier all the way. Mail of the Dead. This is a uh, splint mail. Excuse me. This is a chain mail that you'll be acquiring in... Um, uh, Irenicus's Dungeon, you'll get this very, very early. It'll give you 1 AC for slashing. This is okay on Vicky early on when you don't have any other armors that she can wear because she has the strength of a wet noodle. But otherwise, this item exists solely to be vendored somewhere to give you an extra 1,000 gold to start Baldur's Gate 2 with. Garbage item all the way. C tier. Melodic Chain. This is a uh, slightly better Elven Chain Mail that will drop from the Planar Prison. For when you get hair to lease, usable only by bards. Unlike el regular elven chain or some of the other elven chains, which can be used by thief mages, fighter mages, etc., etc. This is bard only. And it gives you a little bit of better AC. Same uh, penalties versus crushing. Not a penalty, but not as good of AC. Better AC for slashing. Perfectly serviceable. B tier. I use it frequently on hair to lease, typically until I get something better. Up next is Mithril Chainmail. This is the armor that Drizzt drops. This will give you a minus one versus slashing, three versus crushing. As I talked about before, crushing attacks will hit Drizzt more often if you're trying to kill him. I'm calling him Drizzt, by the way. I don't call him Drizzt or whatever the hell his stupid name's pronounced. If you wanted me to call you that, you should have spelled it that way. Shouldn't spell it Drizzt. 
Anyways, this item is uh, pretty garbage. However, one thing that is nice and noticeable about this item is you can stealth and use thieving abilities with it, which I actually really like. However, that's mostly for BG1 because you can kill Drizzt whenever the hell you want and you don't have to worry about some asshole showing up and imprisoning your whole party for using his item. If you do want to do that, there are a couple ways to get around it in Baldur's Gate 2, like having Bodhi kill him, but huge pain in the ass. And even then, the reward you get is pretty not worth it. Like I said before, if you're playing a thief, you want your thief to be using the man coat or something else that is going to give him way better uh, bonuses than just something that could be used while stealthing and giving him one AC for slashing. Like, who cares? Seats your item. This item exists to be sold, unless you're playing BG1. Mithril Field Plate. This is an item worn by uh, Bruno or Battlehammer, one of Drizzt's uh, butt buddies that you'll fight in Baldur's Gate 2. This is just a full plate plus two. This exists to be sold. Sells for a nice amount too, if I remember correctly. Actually, I think it uh, doesn't. It sells for 1500 and it pisses me off because the item says it looks um, very, very nice. Up next is Orc Leather. This uh, item will give you an extra uh, damage resistance to missile damage, decent modifiers, and a penalty to charisma. Pretty whatever. Missile damage in this game really doesn't do all that much. It's actually a lot more dangerous than Baldur's Gate 1, where enemies are attacking you with uh, fire arrows and plus one arrows fairly regularly. In Baldur's Gate 2, you'll have a couple archers early on. I guess you could talk about the planers, the solars that fight you in Ascension, but, like, if you get to a Melisand and you're using this item, man, like... Good luck. That's all I'm saying. C tier item all the way. Not particularly great, but it can be fun and useful at times, I suppose. Up next, plate of Balduran. I actually like this item. Um, this is a full plate plus two um, that can be acquired uh, right out the gate in uh, Baldur's Gate 2. You buy it from the Adventurer's Mart, a special shop. It gives you a little bit of extra HP and charisma. Uh, by using this uh, as a dwarf and putting on your cloak, you're now a uh, charisma capped. Or not. No, I take that back. 16 right yeah okay so that doesn't work but it still gives you an extra charisma and 4 hp and it's a full plate plus two you really aren't going to get a better ac item than this early on um and that's the only reason i give it b tier to be honest but the modifiers again early on uh, that goes mentioning before is something i've talked about the earlier you get an item that has very high ac the better off and better useful it is the way thaco scales in this game is because the Thaco table for fighters, every single level they get, they get one better Thaco. So in Baldur's Gate 1, where you're fighting somebody who's a level 9 fighter, who's got Grain Mastery, that dude's going to hit a lot. But a level 5 fighter or a level 5 thief, not going to hit nearly as often. When you get to somebody who's level 20, level 22, level 25, and throwing a ball, that dude has a base Thaco of 0. He's got Grand Mastery and a weapon. He's going to have a Strength bonus. He's going to have a weapon that's at least plus 3 enchanted. And all of a sudden... Unless you're stacking AC with a buttload of modifiers with a specific class and goal in mind, it doesn't really matter how much AC you have, you're going to get hit a lot. And even if you do do that stacking on one or two characters, you can't do it on your whole party. There just aren't enough items in the game to make that possible. So early on in Baldur's Gate 2, it's nice to have a little extra AC early. That's when it comes and shows up, and that's where you can get it. And for that reason, it's B tier. Up next is Red Dragon Scale. This is one of the S plus items. I absolutely love this item. It is a full plate plus two that also gives you 50% fire resistance, which is nice. The modifiers you get here aren't actually as good as true full plate plus two, but they are still perfectly decent. But the real reason you're using this is for the fire resistance. You can combine this with Drizzt Scimitar and you're capped. You can combine this with the Ring of Fire Resistance from the Underdark and you're capped. You can combine this with Battleista's Passport and a Helmet and you're capped. You can combine this with a Helm and a Shield and you're capped, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. There are a million ways for you to cap fire resistance on your front line without worrying about giving them protection from fire. And since fire is the number one source of elemental damage, as I talked about earlier, it is really, really important for them to be as resistant to fire as possible. Again, Comet, Dragon's Breath, it's usually going to be cast on your front line because those are what's closest to the mages, and it's important for them to not get absolutely destroyed by this. You can acquire this by killing Furcrag, he drops scales, you bring him to Cromwell, and he makes it for you. 5,000 gold, very affordable, very great. 10 out of 10, great item, can't say enough good things about it. Up next is the Robe of Goodman Haze. This used to be a lot better in the uh, original versions when this Chaos Shield actually stacked automatically with base Chaos Shield, which was hilarious. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that anymore. It does mean that you don't have to cast Chaos Shield, but 
if you're playing a wild mage, I typically don't bother spamming Reckless to Yomer until I get improved Chaos Shield, which is a level 7 spell at 1.5 million XP, which is pretty easy to get in Baldur's Gate 2 anyways. If you're scrolling or doing other strategies to get XP early, you can hit that benchmark fairly quickly, typically before I even get this damn item, um, because this does require clearing uh, the Red Wizard Enclave, which I don't like doing. It can only be used by wild mages, or obviously people with using the item can put it on. It does look cool, so that is something to say. It's very shiny and stuff, but um, not really all that useful. C tier. Up next is Robe of Invocation. I actually like this robe a lot, because this is the robe... Uh, we had talked about the elemental uh, resistances earlier, and how useful they are, although I don't typically use them, because obviously they only apply to one. This applies to four. And that's quite nice because this can and will stack with other items that will give you even more resistance, if not flat out immunity. You can combine this robe, for example, with the cloak of elemental resistance, and now you get healed by every lightning bolt that gets cast, even if you're completely dispelled and buffless, which is nice. It is almost impossible to cap fire resistance without combining um, both fire resist rings, which sucks because that really should be going to your front line. But this can sometimes save a mage's life. If you're playing with a heavy mage party, um, I definitely would recommend picking up and using this at least early on. And for that, I'm going to give it a B tier. Robe of Red Flames, on the other hand, is absolute garbage. Even though it gives you 30% fire resistance, which is nice, it's only to one. And that's only 10 M uh, fire resistance more than um, the Robe of Fire Resistance. It also increases all fire damage inflicted by the wearer by 10%. I This is so unnoticeable. It's absolutely amazing. Fire damage dealt by you in this game is the most heavily resisted element by far. There are gonna be more enemies who are resisted, if not flat out immune to fire than any other element in this game, bar none. I, I, it's, it's garbage. It's so trash. The only thing I could possibly see this being useful for is when you're high level and dropping Comet Dragon's Breath on people with improved alacrity. And if you're doing that, you'd rather be wearing Vecna or any other item that gives you spell casting speed. So garbage item. And now we get to the first S++ tier item, absolutely god tier giga chat item, the Robo Vecna. And this will set your AC to 5, who cares, gives you 10 MR, which is perfectly nice. But the most important thing is this improves casting speed by 4. This is fucking massive. The way casting speed works in this game is every uh, spell will have a cast speed of 1 to 10. And 10 doesn't mean 10 seconds. It's a percentage of duration of a round with one being the earliest and 10 being a full round around being six seconds so if you see a spell that has a casting uh time of 10 that means it's going to take six seconds for it to cast so this is going to increase your cast speed by four which means anything that requires four or less cast instantly just like that boom chain lighting instantly goes off lightning bolt instantly goes off skull trap instantly goes off stone skin protection from magical weapons instantly now early on this is nice it's not remotely game breaking or special it's nice being able to cast stuff instantly however when you combine this with reckless to yomer as a wild mage which has built-in aura cleansing which is improved alacrity or when you're using the actual wizard spell improved alacrity that's when this item becomes absolutely insanely busted Nira is capable of soloing entire fights by herself by spamming Reckless Dreamer with this item and Amulet of Power, which we'll talk about later. Edwin is very much capable of doing the exact same thing. Any wizard is. Robe of Vecna with Aura Cleansing is disgustingly strong. Horde wilting after horde wilting after horde wilting into a time stop, into horde wilting, horde wilting, horde wilting time stop. It, it, it just, it's gross. It's absolutely gross. Highly recommend it if you don't use it. I mean, I'm sure you've heard of it and have used it a million times. I'm not talking to people who are first-timing this game, but, you know, absolutely amazing. Stacks with other uh, casting speed items, such as the uh, Amulet uh, Power, God Tier, Giga Chat item all the way. Get it as soon as you can, and it does nothing but scale. S++ for sure. Up next is Robe of the Apprentice. I don't think I've ever made this before. This is a robe that is made by your apprentices if you are a mage in the planar sphere. Typically, you want your apprentices to stay alive so they can make you better items later on. Like the, um, the Horde Wilting Scroll, the Reaching Ring, or possibly the Staff of Power. And uh, this is going to stop you from getting those items. So, 
garbage C tier all the way. Never used it once. Robe of the Arc Magi. I'm just going to put evil here, but this will also apply to good neutral. Um, this is perfectly usable. If you're running a heavy wizard party, you'll absolutely have this on at least one or two wizards. Um, it sets your base AC to five, whatever, who cares. It does give you one save and five MR, which is perfectly nice, and that's what you use it for. You're really not going to get too many bonuses out of wizard robes if you have a lot of wizards in your party, unfortunately. And that just means that somebody's going to have to be the bitch and use one of these robes. And BG1 is the best armor a wizard can get. And Baldur's Gate 2, obviously Vecna and a couple others are, in my opinion, better. But this is still perfectly serviceable. For that, I give it B tier. Up next, we have the Shadow Armor. This armor is changed with Rogue Rebalancing. In the base game, it's a... Uh, Studded Leather plus three, that gives you a bonus to Stealth. In uh, Rogue Rebalancing, it does that as well. However, it also does not disable spell casting. This makes this item extremely good on Thief Mages uh, like Yon, Emoen, Nalia. And obviously, if your character is a Thief Mage, they can use it as well. This will give you a bonus to Stealth, just like it does before. But most importantly, it doesn't disable your spell casting, and it gives you a fairly decent AC. Until you get Elven Chain, or if you do plan on using Stealth at all, this item is absolutely great and serviceable. B tier, uh, if it's um, if you're just using it as a Thief, A tier, however, if you're using it as a Thief Mage. Perfectly good item. Not the best item in the game, but you get it very, very early on in Baldur's Gate 2. You get it by killing Mavar, and so for that reason, it's B, possibly A, depending on your class. Up next, we have the Shadow Dragon Scale. I think I've used this once in my life. Uh, this will give you uh, resistance versus acid, which is perfectly nice. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't really a lot of acid in this game. There is some, but the AC that you get from this, in addition to the resistance being acid, it's it's okay. Compare this to, say, Furcrag's Plate, which is going to give you more AC and resistance to fire, which is by far a uh, more common source of elemental damage. Uh, like I said, I think I've used this maybe once, but even then, it's, it's pretty underwhelming. It's serviceable for certain situations. If you're doing Rasad's quest, for example, or you're fighting a dragon that does acid damage, this is perfectly nice to have, but otherwise you should almost never be using it. It does look cool, and it can be used by uh, stalkers and rangers, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, um, but still not all that great. Uh, you'll acquire this from killing the Shadow Dragon, Thassalaxia, whatever the fuck her name is, in the Umar Hills dungeon. Up next, we have Shrupak's Plate. This is the item that drops off of... Yagashura and throwing a ball gives you one dex, 20 MR, or excuse me, 20 fire resistance. And it gives you um, the same uh, AC modifiers as Armor of the Heart, which is a full plate plus three, minus six for slashing, five for piercing a missile. This item is perfectly decent, but keep in mind around this point, you're also going to be acquiring a Kindu's plate. Compare this to Furcrag's armor, which gives you way more fire resistance. Or Gorgon plate, which you should also have by now. This item's okay. Um, you might end up using it in a heavy martial party again, and for that reason I give it a B tier, but by the time you have this item, you should have better, or are about to acquire better. Up next, Silver Dragon Scale. This is an S-plus item that is acquired from Dorne's Quest in Throne of Ball. You actually get two of them, but you can kill two Silver Dragons. This item is exceptionally good for certain classes. Uh, it gives you minus two charisma, who the hell cares? 15 MR, which is quite nice, increases your movement rate, but what really makes this item shine is every single time you get hit, you heal for two HP. The reason this is so good is because damage reduction stacking in this game is king, using things like um, Hardiness, Defender of East Haven, um, if you're a barb or a dwarven defender, obviously you're going to get additional damage reduction. Uh, clerics or uh, rangers and paladins are capable of using armor of faith, and etc. etc. Obviously, they can't use this because they have to be good, but damage reduction in this game scales and stacks very, very nicely and very, very well. If you have 100% damage reduction and equip this item, which is absolutely doable if you're a dwarven defender or a barb. Uh, actually, I don't think barbs can use this, right? Yeah, Barb's can't use it. Um, if you're a Dwarven Defender um, and equip this item with 100% damage reduction, you will get healed every time you get hit. You don't take damage. You get healed. And that means that if you're standing in fire and taking fire damage and there are enemies attacking you, you are actually gaining HP. You're gaining it back, which is hilarious. This also gives you 15 MR, like I just said, and the movement rate is perfectly nice. Nothing to sneeze at. The uh, modifiers are okay. Minus 5 for slashing and 3 for piercing. That's perfectly decent, especially at this stage of the game. It also looks cool and shiny. Uh, very, very strong item. Unfortunately, you do have to use Dorn in Throne of Ball. And using Dorn, puke. 
However, his quest is fairly easy. The dragons are an absolute fucking joke. Very easy to acquire. You can acquire it early on in TOB. And again, you get two. So if for some reason you do want to play with Doran, give him one and take one yourself. Great item. Very strong. Up next, we have Skin of the Ghoul. I don't think I've ever used this before. This will drop from the Beholder quest uh, during the Unseeing Eye. Uh, this is just going to be a leather armor plus four that also gives you plus three Saver's Death. Saver's Death is nice. You can stack this with... Um, as I talked about before, uh, with other items, and situationally, you may want to use this on a thief, and for that, I'm going to give it B tier, but generally speaking, this item is pretty garbage. You're really not going to use it all that often. Up next, we have the Studded Leather of the Thorns. I believe this is the one that drops off Sendai very late and thrown a ball, which I guess not that late, but not exactly early. Anytime somebody successfully hits you, they take 1d4 points of fire. We already talked about while fire is the most resisted uh, elemental damage in this game, and its modifiers are not good, but that's fine, because if you're using this item, you want to be hit by enemies, so then they take the fire damage. I don't know. This item's kind of a meme. Uh, it looks funny, but I don't think I've ever used it once. I've tried to find ways to use it, by like maybe if I like if I cast fire shield red and blue and then put this on my fighter mage and then I, I cast protection from magical weapons from a sequencer that goes off or contingency that goes off in combat and then everyone's hitting me and then I remember that nobody's hitting me because they have to actually successfully hit me and my plan is ruined and I feel like an idiot and there's really no good way to make this work unfortunately. Up next, we have the Sylvan Chain. I don't even remember where this drops up. I think this is thrown a ball, but honestly, don't know. Don't care. Who cares? This is like the 50th Elven Chain you acquire at this stage in the game. Gives you slightly better modifiers than a regular Elven Chain because it's plus two, but who the hell cares? Trade Keep Plate. This is an item that's sold from the Adventurer's Mart in this special shop after you come back from Spellhold. Gives you a massive constitution penalty of two, which is really painful because the only people who are going to be using this are fighters. Maybe a thief with using the item, but they're way better. A massive charisma penalty. But who the hell cares because it's charisma? But it gives you minus two uh, armor base and a minus five for slashing. So this is worse than the Gorgon plate for AC in every way, both for fucking slashing, and it gives you massive painful penalties. Don't forget that if you have 18 con, going to 16 con is going to give you a penalty if you're a fighter ethos because of the way bonus HP works for those classes. This item is garbage. I've never bought or used it once. Knight's Gift this is going to be a leather uh, plus 5 that also gives you 20% hide and shadows. Who the hell cares? You're going to have better armor on your thief by the time you pick this up. Traveler's Robe. This is the item I use the most in Baldur's Gate 1 for a mage until so you get the um, uh, uh, robes of the neutral good or evil arc magi because this gives you a bonus for missile attacks and that is by far the most common source of damage they're taking you're going to get jumped by bandits all the time they're going to get hit and they're going to die and then they're going to go back to temple and pay a thousand gold to res them it's not fun save versus breath who cares never happens um yeah it's an item that you're only going to use in Baldur's gate one b tier for that reason but not Calling it B-tier is bold, but I will and use it often on mages. Up next, we have the Tunica Blind Eye. This is actually a really fun item that you can acquire from uh, Nearest Quest in Baldur's Gate 2. You buy this from the shop. You can get it fairly early on. You cast a Wild Zone, which makes all spells cast within 15-foot radius are treated as Wild Surges. This works for enemies as well. However, they have to fail their save in order for it to actually work on them, which is kind of a meme in and of itself. But um, if there are a lot of wizards casting spells clerics included and you're a wild mage because you can't use this as anything but a wild mage or a thief with use any item and you drop this shit's gonna hit the fan and it's gonna be hilarious that being said i would find this extremely dangerous to use i think i've used this once in my life on stream and it was uh with the liches and sendai's enclave and i think one or two of them got hit and the rest just saved and it turned into an absolute shit show and it's you're kind of better off not doing this because you know what enemies are going to be casting. You know that they're going to drop a Planetar, Comet, Dragon's Breath, Time Stop, Skull Trap, Spree, Truby Ray. You know what enemies are going to cast. It's pretty obvious by looking at them. And adding a lot of chaos to that, all of a sudden enemies might drop five Planetars on you. Maybe Comet drops three times. Maybe uh, they cast a Petrification spell, which now has no save because it was a Wild Surge. There's a lot of bad wild surges that can happen to enemies, but there's a lot of good ones too. And typically what happens is when you get a wild surge, it's a bad one. And when an enemy gets a wild surge, it's a good one. 
And I don't know why or how the game is coded that way, but that sure is how the way it fucking feels like it. Especially, you'll notice this if you've ever fought um, Nira's uh, boss uh, bitch mage in Throne of Ball, the Wild Mage, who seems to, every time, cast a Reckless Dreomer, either cast it successfully or gets an amazingly good surge. And that happens all the time you use this. Even though I've only used it on stream once, I played with it off stream a bit. Super fun to play with. Love it. Usefulness, very limited. It also increases your movement rate, looks extremely stylish, especially on Yawn if you give it to him with using the item. And it reduces your magic damage taken by 25%. Again, just like uh, Valigar's armor, this is going to apply to magic missile, force missiles, horrid wilting, that sort of thing. Doesn't do anything to fireball, lightning bolt, etc, etc. That can be okay and nice. You can combine that with the belt. You can combine that with... Um, I think actually it's just the belt that gives you a uh, magic damage reduction. I feel like there might be one other thing I'm blanking on right now, but it's okay. It's fun to use, but I think I've used this on stream once. B tier all the way, just because it's so fun though. Up next, we have the white dragon scale. This is uh, going to be crafted from white dragon scales that are acquired in Watcher's Keep, I think. Yeah, late Watcher's Keep, I feel like. Gives you 50% cold resistance. Uh, it's always nice to have elemental re reduction, but uh, cold isn't very common, especially at this stage of the game. It gives you uh, bonuses to Piercing Missile, and one of the few items that actually gives you a bonus versus Crushing. And you can also cast Kona Cold three times a day with it. whoop de fucking do However, um, this can be used by Stalkers and uh, Archers, which is nice, because I think this is categorized, even though it's a Splint Mail, uh, because it's not made out of metal, um, a lot of other uh, people are capable of using it, like Beastmaster, etc., etc. And it gives you fairly decent uh, modifiers for that, considering. And finally, we have the Yellow Dragon Scale Armor. This gives you 50% resistance to piercing and missile attacks, and a base AC of 1 with no modifiers whatsoever. Piercing and missile are not very common, unfortunately. Or, excuse me. Uh, by the time you get this... Piercing and Missile are a lot less common. However, it is still very common for the final fight with a Melisan because the Solars are going to be using uh, the Spelling Arrows and they are going to be hitting very, very, very hard. If you take this armor and you cast Hardiness with the Fetter of Easthaven and you slap Ronorx Helm on your head, you are now completely immune to Piercing, Missile, and Crushing attacks, which is cool. It's quite nice. That's something you can think about. You can stack your shit in a way that will make you basically immune to a lot of attacks. Don't even have to be a Barbarian or a Dwarven Defender. This will absolutely see some use for that fight. And for that reason, I'm going to give it an A tier, possibly an S tier rating. But outside of that, there's really no reason to use it, honestly. Okay. And that is it for the armors here. Just going to do a quick overview real quick, like I said before. As far as the armors go, early on in Baldur's Gate 1, you want to look for whatever has the highest AC. In Baldur's Gate 2, you typically want to go for something that has high fire resistance. Furcrag's armor. Uh, Gorgon Plate, which has massive modifiers in addition to fire and acid reduction. Um, and Kidu's Plate gives you backstab immunity. Uh... Robo Vecna, obviously, is an absolute powerhouse. Um, stuff like that. But again, at the end of the day, if you want to roleplay wearing some garbage-ass armor like Skin of the Ghoul, fucking do it, man. The world is your goddamn oyster, man. Whatever makes you happy. You know what I mean? Up next, we have the Amulets. Amulet of 5% magic resistance. You can acquire this by doing the Unseeing Eye quest. Uh, this will drop off the Unseeing Eye himself. 5 MR is perfectly serviceable. You can stack it with other MR items to make it more useful. In and of itself, though, pretty garbage. B tier item. Up next is Amulet of Cheetah Speed. You'll acquire this in Sendai's Enclave and Throne a Ball. This is actually an S tier item simply because once per day you get to improve haste yourself for a max duration and pace, which is 23 rounds. It also increases your movement rate. Who the fuck cares about this? This alone makes this item always worth having and using in Throne of Ball. Improved Haste is arguably the strongest spell for its level outside of the original unnerfed um, Melts Minute Meteors and um, the unnerfed Insect Plague. Absolutely insanely strong, doubling your attacks per round and giving you uh, double movement speed for 23 rounds. So good. Can't say enough good things about it. When you pick this item up, use it every single time you can. Up next is Amulet of Power. This is another S plus item. Borderline S plus plus because it's so fucking good. This gives you complete immunity to level drain, so you don't have to worry about vampires sucking you off anymore. Uh, magic resistance plus 5%. Perfectly nice. Vocalize, so you never have to be uh, 
worry about getting silenced, and increases your spell casting by one, which will stack with Vecna and will stack with other items that give you increased spell casting speed. Absolutely god tier item. Uh, obviously, Edwin can't use this, which sucks, but then you can give Edwin Vecna, and you can give this to Aerie or some other wizard in your party. You could spread out your spellcasting items, uh, spellcasting speed items, if you want. That way, everyone will be able to stone skin instantly, protection from magical weapons, etc., etc. Super awesome item. Great utility. Uh, you can give this to, I think Paladins can still use this. Monks used to be able to use it if you're playing the unmodded vanilla version. Um... Monks are able to use this. They nerfed it in Enhanced Edition for God knows why. Because, like, God forbid there should be a class that doesn't have immunity to um, to level drain. Monks are literally the only one now, I think, that actually don't have an immunity if you're not playing with Rogue Rebalancing, which gives you a dagger. Absolute joke. But, you know, late game powerhouse. So what, what the fuck do you know, right? Super amazing item. Uh, you can get this uh, by killing Aaron Linvale if you side with Bodhi. If you side with Aaron Linvale, he gives it to you. Very good item. Amulet of the Seldarine, you'll get at the end of Baldur's Gate 2 for saving all the filthy elves. 10 MR plus 1 save. A tier item. This is an item that I almost always end up using. I should give it an S tier, but um, MR, in my opinion, is only really useful if you're stacking it. If you just have 10 MR, you're almost never going to see it do anything. So if you're stacking it, good. Otherwise, not great. Amulet of Spell Warding. Um, this is okay. Uh, you can acquire this fairly early on. Gives you an extra two bonus for spells. Uh, there aren't enough good necks in this game, so you can absolutely slap this on somebody and make use out of it. B tier item. Amulet of Master Harper. You'll acquire this in Yagashura's Enclave and Throne of Ball. This will give you extra fine traps, open locks, immunity to silence, and a base AC bonus of three. That's actually kind of nice. You don't get any saving throw bonus, which kind of sucks, but, um... You can absolutely use this and will use this at times for certain teeth ethos and classes, especially if you're going any kind of uh, swashbuckler or max AC build, you're going to want to pick up and use this item. There are also, for some hilarious reason, a handful of traps at this location in Throne of Ball and elsewhere where you need more than 100 fine traps, and this plus 20 fine traps is actually useful for that. For that reason, B tier, not particularly great, but in certain situations it's useful. And draw with this amulet. This is an amulet that protects you against wing buffets. Excuse me, buffets. Excuse me. Um, so you can't get knocked back by dragons. This is actually quite useful. Uh, a Bazagal doesn't really spam this. Uh, no dragon really does. But there are absolutely times where I have been knocked back into a wall, knocked down, and the dragon ran forward and butt pounded me, and I could not do anything about it. Berserking is the only other uh, thing you can do in this game that will make you immune to the knockdown of Wing Buffets. Wing Buffet actually comes with, I believe, a minus 15 save versus breath penalty. So it's actually really hard to save against. So having this on is quite nice um, in that situation. Slap this on your tank. You don't have to worry about your tank getting bent over and pounded when you don't want them to. Because obviously you do want your tank to get pounded, just not in... Not in a bad way, in a good way. You know what I mean. Um, B tier, useful for certain situations, but you can absolutely go without it. And Let's be honest, by the time you're killing a Bazagal, there aren't too many dragons left. Kind of would be nicer if you got it earlier, but it is what it is. Archer Eyes. This is an item that will be acquired in uh, the Underdark if you got it in uh, Siege of Dragon Spear and exported to Baldur's Gate 2. This will give you an extra chance to score a critical hit on ranged attacks and an extra dex or plus two for archers. Absolutely great for an archer. Pretty garbage for everyone else. Who the hell cares? Getting one dex in the Underdark, like who the fuck gives a shit? Um, extra chance to score a crit. Again, if you're anything but an archer, who the hell gives a shit? But uh, quite useful. Quite useful for an archer, A tier, possibly S tier, because increasing your crit chance is very nice. I'm still of the school that archers should be taking crit strike, not using uh, Greater Whirlwind. Other people disagree, they're wrong, but that's okay. You're allowed to be wrong and do whatever the hell you want. I like this item, and I will use it whenever I play an archer. A tier for me. Up next is the Barrier Amulet. This is an item that is acquired from the Chosen of Syric Encounter if you have Rogue Rebalancing installed. This will allow you to cast Stone Skin and Minor Globe three times a day um, from a next slot for Thiefs and Mages. For some hilarious reason, this isn't usable by a Bard, but that's okay, because by the time you get to this encounter, you're going to be using use any item anyways. Um, actually, it's not usable by Thieves either. I didn't know that. I thought it was just Bard who couldn't use it base, but this, unless you have use any item or are a wizard, you're not going to be using this. 
So you can't give this to a fighter, sadly. Unless it's a fighter thief, obviously. But still a very, very useful item, especially for your thieves and thief mages. Being able to cast Stone Skin and Minor Globe is especially useful for the final fight. This will be have its charges reset along with everything else um, whenever you cast a Wish Rest spell. Uh, very, very good item. Useful. Nice to have. I think it's an S tier item, just because once you get in on a thief, you are far less susceptible to getting popped. Great item. S tier all the way. Up next, we have the Brooch of the Vagrant Blades, which reflects magic missiles. I think I've used this on several playthroughs, and I've never once seen it actually used to effect, unless I accidentally misclicked and magic missiled my own party member. Completely useless item, RP tier all the way, vendor that garbage. Greenstone Amulet. A lot of people like this item. I never seem to fucking use it at times when I should, aside from one or two fights in Baldur's Gate 1. Uh, this gives you complete immunity to basically all psionic attacks for one uh, turn. It is very, very useful in that regard. Um, I just said it gives you complete immunity to psionic attacks, and then it says note here it does not confer complete immunity to psionics. I'm pretty sure that's specifically in reference to... Um, the detonation and other damaging abilities that uh, Mind Flayers do, but this should work against every other ability they have. Um, charm, Feeble Mind, etc., etc. If you are worried about getting Chaos, you should use this item. If you're worried about getting Charmed, you can use this item, etc., etc. If you think this is going to make you invincible and you can go and face fuck 10 Mind Flayers, you're going to die. But if you're worried about the others, this has your back. For that, I'll give it a B tier. Up next is the Harper Pin. This is acquired by Jihira and only usable by Jihira unless you're using using the item. Using the item doesn't get around every uh, companion item restriction, but it does for this one. Massive plus five bonus for spells, complete immunity to elect electricity, non-detection, and immunity to magic missile. Absolutely amazing item for Jihira. Even better when you're slapping on your own thief character. Um, being being able to get this and then combine it with the man code, for example, means you're basically fucking invincible when it comes to spells. A plus nine bonus for spells for a neck and a chest piece is absolutely nutty. Throw ring of Gax on and another plus two ring, and now you're looking at, what's that, negative 13 bonus for spells? Holy shit, bro. And it also gives you complete immunity to electricity, non-detection, which is great. I mean, great item. S plus tier all the way. Um, especially if you're a thief, but still absolutely great on Jahira. Great item. Um, you don't need to be romancing Jahira for this to happen, by the way. You need to have, I think, 15 rep and finish all her stupid cringy dialogues and do all her garbage in Baldur's Gate 2, and Elminster will eventually give it to you. Whether her, you're romancing her or not, you'll get that item eventually, but it takes a while. Up next, Heart of the Mountain. This is an absolute meme item given to a meme class called the Shaman. Gives you plus two AC, who the fuck cares, and summon spirits gain 10 8 points. And neither of these things are remotely useful for a Shaman because you're an absolutely garbage, poorly thought out class. The idea of being a Shaman and casting spells using the Sorcerer Spell Table, but with, uh, excuse me, Sorcerer Spell Progression, but with the Druid Spell Table sounds awesome. And actual execution, it blows. And even worse, they have an enormous amount of penalties and a crappy dance, but that's another video. Uh, the class sucks. Um, it is not fun to play. Uh, the mechanic of dancing is absolute garbage. The summon spirits are absolutely horrendous when it comes to tanking. They do no damage whatsoever. They are trash. And giving trash 10 more HP does not stop it from being trash. Putting a wig on a pig... It's still a pig. I mean, whatever makes you happy, but still a pig. Garbage. Vendor that shit. Up next, we have the Necklace of Form Stability. I already talked about before why uh, saves versus polymorph are absolute garbage. For some hilarious reason, this is um, the most times you'll ever have a save versus petrification or polymorph is in Baldur's Gate 1 when you're fighting basilisks. And you don't want to have to save versus petrification or polymorph because you're just going to fail and die. So this item gets almost no use. Um, by the way, the, the spell Flesh to Stone is a saver spell as well. So, not petrification for some hilarious reason. This item is garbage. Vendor it. Get that shit the hell out of here. Up next, Parapetet, a life prote protection. I actually like this item and use it a lot. This is acquired from Hexed's quest in Baldur's Gate 2. Um, this is the first dungeon she goes to when you actually get the real Hexed, not the fake one. Um, it's in one of the... Uh, coffins very early on and gives you a plus three save for his death this is quite nice planetar is decapitate with a minus two penalty Baylor will decapitate with a minus four or six penalty very high very good item very useful stacks of other items that gives plus save for his death a tier all the way 
Peripatet of Proof Against Poison. This gives you uh, poison immunity, which is nice. You take no damage from Cloud Kill. You don't have to worry about uh, poisons from Assassins or um, whatever Dorn's stupid classes. I'm going to think of this. I'm not going to continue this video until I remember what his class is. I've been up all day, so my brain has just turned to mush 100 years ago. Blackguard. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Um, so you don't have to worry about poison damage from that. You don't have to worry about mummy breath, which is really nice. You don't have to worry about poison damage from Demogorgon's encounter, which is really nice. Um, almost an S-tier item, but I'm still going to leave it at A-tier. But situationally, it's extremely useful. Uh, there are a lot of poisons in this game. Mummy breath, especially greater mummies, will kill you in seconds. And being able to do a quick swap to stop that from happening. Chef's kiss. Up next, we have the Ruby Pendant of Beguiling. It's an absolute fucking meme. Uh, it's Dire Charm once per day, save or spell negates. Who the fuck cares? Garbage. Only lasts one turn, no penalty for saving, and it's save or spell. Garbage. Sensate Amulet. This is an item that can be bought from um, Adventurer Smart Special Shop. Um, not the one from the after the Underdark. Not his special stock, but the other chick who sells Robo Vecna. Um, this gives you an extra 2 Charisma, 5 HP, and permanent passive protection from evil. On paper, this looks nice, uh, but if you're a cleric, which you, you probably are, because the clerics, I think, are the only thing you can use this. Um, I think druids can, too. Oh, no, druids can't use it either. Hilarious. Uh, very few classes can use, use this. You should always have protection from evil up if you're a cleric. Uh, extra 2 Charisma, that's okay. You can combine that with other Charisma boosting items if you have low Charisma, but... I typically will, if I do buy this, I'm, because I'm giving it to Vicky to give her an extra 5 HP, because she has the HP of, you know, <clears throat> let's see, used tea bag. Yeah, she has the HP of a used tea bag. She'll fall apart very quickly. Having an extra 5 HP may save her life, especially if you combine it with the Helm of Baldoran, giving her an extra 10 HP along with the Con Belt, and all of a sudden, she's looking a lot safer than she was a minute ago. For that reason, B tier, but... I typically don't buy this, even when I'm playing with Vicky, so it's okay. Especially if you combine it with other shit. By itself, it's garbage. Shield Amulet, I don't think I've ever used this once. Um, people, for some hilarious reason, keep telling me that I need to buy this and use it on my Kensei. Giving my Kensei an extra 6 AC, 8 versus Missile, is not going to stop him from getting his ass absolutely pounded into oblivion by any, and I mean any, enemy in this game. It's a complete joke of an item. Borderline RP tier. Amplifier is B tier. You can get this very early on in Baldur's Gate 2. Uh, a little bit uh, later in the end of Baldur's Gate 1, you get it in BG City. Just gives you an extra level 2 wizard spell. Perfectly nice. Give this to Herdelise early, who is desperately needing extra level 2 spells. You can give it to Yon, Imowen, whoever you want. Kind of nice. B tier. You'll definitely get better soon enough, but early on, perfectly serviceable. One Gift Laws. This is going to be basically a fireball spell. It's a Missile Blast of the 66 Fire. I don't remember how many charges it has. It either has 10 or 20. I still might be wrong. Maybe it's 50 or 100. Who knows? Um, it's okay. It, situationally, you can use it because you can give this to pretty much everything but a Wizard Slayer. So your fighters can use it too, but it's still not great. Up next, you have a, just a necklace plus one. Perfectly nice. Typically, it's better to use a ring, but in some situations, you want to have your rings being, uh, ring slots being used for resistance items. Maybe you have Ring of Gax, and you want to use a fire resistance ring, or maybe two fire resistance rings, or maybe Ring of Earth Control and something else, etc., etc. You get the idea, right? There are times when you want to end up using this, and the Wooden Horse Necklace is the one you get from Nearest Quest, which is just Ring of Protect, uh, Amulet of Protection plus two. Both are perfectly good and serviceable items in certain situations. B tier all the way. Wolf's Bane Charm. I don't think this is even in Baldur's Gate 2. I don't know why it's here, but it was on the E Keeper, so I put it in. Gives you an extra 2 damage versus Lycanthropes and a 2 Thacko versus Lycanthropes. Um, useful for Werewolf Island and Baldur's Gate and then never fucking again. And in Baldur's Gate 2, let's see. There's 6 Werewolves that spawn in Umar, or excuse me, Windspear. I think that's it. There might be another doggo out there somewhere, but don't know. Don't care. Garbage. C tier. Vendor that shit. It's not even vendorable in BG1, I don't think. I'm not sure if it is in BG2, but still crap. And that's going to do it for the amulets here. Up next, we have the pairs of boots to keep your cute feet warm. First, you have the Boots of Elvenkind. You're going to acquire this, and I believe sold an SLR. It gives you an extra 30% move silently. Absolute garbage. By this point, you're going to be using Boots of Speed or something better. Don't need this shit. 
Boots of etherealness, uh, where is immune to normal weapons. Spells may still cast and normal uh, weapons may still be used. Perfectly serviceable if you're worried about being attacked by something that you know is going to be using normal weapons. I don't think I've ever fucking used this once. Um, but they have. You can combine it with protection for magical weapons. Yeah, don't care. It's garbage. Where that matters the most would be like the Chosen of Cyric and... Good luck getting this off during that fight. C tier, garbage all the way. Up next, we have the Boots of Lightning Speed. This is actually a hilarious item because it gives you a double strength haste spell, but you can't attack or cast spells while using it. This is super fun, super meme to play with because it does stack with other movement speed items and you can go insanely fast, but being unable to attack or cast spells kind of sucks. I don't ever use it. It's garbage. I think that might actually be a Black Pits item, honestly. I don't remember where this comes from. I don't know. Don't care. Uh, boots of phasing, AC plus two, uh, phases to a random every enemy every two rounds, uh, two rounds when an enemy is in sight. Um, again, not entirely sure where this comes from. Not a good item. It's going to teleport you next to people and you're going to die. C tier. Boots of the Fox. Uh, this item is great. This is an item that drops off the Chosen of Cyric. This is literally an AC boost on top of Boots of Speed. Excellent item. S tier all the way. Uh, boots of the West. Um... And do charisma plus one and immunity to disease. This is actually really useful versus Demogorgon. I have no fucking idea where this comes from either. I don't know if this is a um a black pits item or not. I apologize. I should have looked at this. Um if it is usable in Baldur's Gate 2, because it comes from somebody's quest of that I just have completely forgotten from my memory banks. I could see this being useful in Demogorgon, and for that I'd give it an A tier. Otherwise, completely useless. Gargoyle boots are excellent. You acquire this late and throw in a ball. This gives you complete immunity to backstab, but most importantly, it gives you stone skin twice per day, two stone skins per use. Um, this is extremely good because you're able to give anyone in your party, period, stone skin. For some hilarious reason, this works on wizard slayers as well. Um, very, 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 very useful item situationally. S tier item all the way. Immunity to backstab is great, but the stone skin being able to be used on a cleric, on a fighter, on a thief. Well, thieves can use stone skin scrolls, but you know what I'm saying. Great item, 10 out of 10, S tier all the way. Moonlight Walkers, these are Rasad's boots. They give him an extra 2 AC. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop enemies from beating the ever living shit out of him. However, it is always nice to have two AC for free, so C tier. You're going to get better pretty quickly, though. Nightwalkers, these are the item boots that are acquired during Rasad's quest late and throw in a ball. These are actually quite good. Uh, increases your movement rate, uh, gives you immunity to web, grease, and entangle. At this stage, who cares? I don't think I've ever seen anyone cast those, but it does give you Shadow Door three times per day, which is going to be a true improved invisibility, uh, which is going to give you extra bonuses for all attacks and saving spells. And allow you to backstab on your first attack. It doesn't last as long. It's only nine rounds. But you can do it three times per day. And again, on any class. And for that reason, this is an A tier item. Old Slippers. These are the boots that you give to the uh, Ghostly Priest in uh, Watcher's Keep. Or you can keep for yourself. Because I've heard they're extremely comfy. And they give you 25% cold resistance. Um, for that reason, I give it a B tier. Cold resistance at this stage. Who the hell cares? This is totally useless. But... I'm giving it B tier because they are quite comfy. Since it's the cat, this is great early on in Baldur's Gate 1 when missile attacks are a serious danger. You can use this against like Elisara and the Solars and Ascension, but their Thacko is so fucking high, you better be stacking a million uh, bonuses versus missile attacks if you want to have any chance of stopping them from hitting you. So in Baldur's Gate 1, A tier if not S tier for wizards. Baldur's Gate 2, if you're stacking a million things, you can make use of that otherwise... Just use Boots of Speed. You can easily get six in BG2. Shadow Boots, these are another pair of items that are acquired from the Chosen of Syric encounter. They're basically um, the stealth boots, but with an extra AC. Garbage. Don't use them. You, boots of Speed are just better. Boots of Speed are better than almost everything, honestly, at this stage. Talos Gift, this is one of the few boots that I do recommend using that's not Boots of Speed. Electrical Resistance in Baldur's Gate 1 is massive because Lightning Belt is common. Electrical Resistance in Baldur's Gate 2 is still really nice, especially early on. You can buy these from the Temple in the Temple District in Baldur's Gate 2 very early on. Very affordable, couple grand. And 50 Electrical Resistance is so good. Lightning Bolt is still an extremely common spell. Chain Lightning Sequencers are still possible. Uh, well, technically spell triggers, but you know what I mean. Definitely recommend. Very good. Frost Embrace. The only time you ever want to use this is when you're fighting Adalon. Maybe when you're fighting the Chromatic Demon in uh, Watcher's Keep. Because of that, I will end up giving it B tier. But after that, you might as well just sell these things. They're so worthless. 
Pause the Cheetah, the classic. You'll have six of these in Baldur's Gate 2 if you uh, do everything and do all your quests. Uh, one drops from Reno Blood Scalp if you kill him. One will drop from the Planar Prison. One will drop if you put 15 tokens into the machine. You'll get two pairs from the Chosen of Cyric. Uh, you'll get a pair in from Elisara. A pair will dr uh, be sold by a vendor in Baldur's Gate 2. And I'm missing another pair. There's another pair out there somewhere. Either way, um, you want to have these on all, everybody in your party if you can, unless you have a very good reason not to, or situationally, obviously. Like I said before, there are certain times when you'd rather use something else, but double movement rate, this stacks with haste, giving you a lot more leeway when it comes to repositioning and dodging spells, abilities, and attacks. Can't say enough good things about it. S tier all the way. Warner Whispers, these are the stealth boots you acquire early on in Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Baldur's Gate 2, you can uh, grab them from the box that has Mavar's notes in it. In Baldur's Gate 1, you acquire it from a hobgoblin south of uh, Bitter Ghost. And nice little bonus is the stealth. Gives you bonus to move silently and hide in shadows, which is quite good. B tier. Alright, now it's time for the cloaks. I apologize for talking so fast. My throat is absolutely destroyed. I recorded this video once already. Noticed I forgot to do all the belts, and because I'm an absolute idiot who refuses to do any editing whatsoever, I decided to just re-record the entire video from scratch like a dumbass. Alright, Cloak time. Cloak of Atonement. On first glance, this cloak looks like it'd be a lot of fun and really useful. Shield of the Archons is an absolutely incredible spell. Armor of Faith is perfectly great. Chant is an excellent spell. Chaotic Commands is great, and Death Ward is useful too. However, you're going to want to use this on your fighters, because obviously if you're a cleric, you don't need a fucking cloak to class cast these. If you're a wizard, uh, a cleric can cast all these on you anyways, and you don't have to worry about them getting dispelled. So you're going to be using this on a fighter, and a fighter doesn't want to reduce their constitution for a random cast of one of these fucking spells. Super annoying. I want to like this cloak, but in actuality, it's absolute garbage. C tier all the way. Cloak of Baldurand, you can't get this in Baldur's Gate 2 unless you're a filthy, disgusting, despicable cheater. You can also get it in the Black Pits, and you can get it uh, in Baldur's Gate City and BG1. It's one of the best cloaks in the game. Gives you uh, plus one AC and saving throws, stacks with all protection items, and gives you 25 MR, which again will stack with all other MR boosting equipment. Exceptionally good item. Shame you can't get it in Baldur's Gate 2 without cheating. Cloak of Bravery, you're going to acquire this in Hell if you're an evil piece of shit. This cloak is made from the skin of innocent nymphs, giving you immunity to fear and panic. If you're doing the test of fear, you can choose the evil path and get this cloak and walk up and take the tier. Who cares? This item is such garbage. The remove fear is a level one cleric spell, and you can get it on wizards as well. You can have a bard sing. Uh, there's a million ways to remove fear in this game. It's garbage. You don't need it. Cloak of Displacement, this is actually quite useful. It gives you plus four versus missile attacks, which is nice. Plus two versus save versus death, breath, and wand. Wand, who cares? Breath, okay. Death is great. Uh, we talked about before, Planetars and Baelors decapitating, uh, Finger of Death. There's a lot of uh, poisons. There's a lot of save versus death in Baldur's Gate. And having bonuses to that on a cloak slot is quite good. Four missile attacks as well. A tier item all the way. Cloak of Dragomir. I don't know why this is even here and why I'm talking about it. This is a cloak for Hexat that stops her from being burned in sunlight when the game is actually functioning properly. Because I've had plenty of times where we're outside in sunlight and Hexat is still burning to death while wearing this cloak. Or when we're underground in a fucking dungeon or in the Underdark and she's still burning to death because somehow the sun is finding her way. Maybe somebody shined a flashlight at her face or something. I don't fucking know. Least buggy companion in the game. Holy shit. Uh, it reduces her stats by a fuck ton, so you really don't want to play with her in sunlight if you can avoid it. Um, I guess B tier? I don't know. It's useful to stop her from burning up, but it's like, oh no, Hexad's dead! Anyways, Cloak of Elvenkind, you require this in Sultan SLR, Hide in Shadows bonus plus 50%. That is a big bonus to Hide in Shadows, but at this stage, your thief should be like 25, maybe 30 if you're a pure thief. And you've done every quest in Baldur's Gate 2? Like, holy shit. You do not need bonuses to stealth at this stage of the game. C tier all the way. I don't think I've ever used it once. Cloak of Miri. This is one of the S plus tier items. This is absolutely disgusting. Um, deflects all spell damage. It includes uh, offensive spells like magic missiles. But not disabling spells such as hold person. Um, there is a lot of bugginess that goes on with this item. There are times when every single spell ever will be deflected when they shouldn't be. 
and there are times when spells will go through that should not go through. That being said, if you've ever fought Kangax or Nira's uh, Wild Mage um, opponent in Throne of Ball, or any other strong high-level wizard who's scripted to time stop and barrage a buttload of spells at you, it is nearly impossible to survive those without protections beforehand, or you could just throw this cloak on and now you're completely immune during their time stop. It is absolutely hilarious how strong this cloak can be. If it's bugged in your favor, this is an S++ item because you take zero damage from any magic ever, period. And it's not supposed to work like that. This is supposed to deflect targeted spells like magic missile, force missiles, fire arrow, stuff like that. And sometimes this works on horde wilting. Sometimes this works on Comet. Sometimes it doesn't, and shit goes through and hits you. Super buggy, but still extremely strong. If you're worried about anyone dying to magic damage, throw this cloak on them, cross your fingers, and they may take zero. Super buggy, crazy, strong, very good. Cloak of Protection plus one, just generic Cloak of Protection plus one, B tier item. Uh, you'll probably get better fairly soon, but if you don't have anything better, nothing wrong with using it right now. Cloak of Reflection, Electrical Resistance plus 100%, reflects all electrical damage back to the source. That's something that does bear mentioning earlier. Typically, if you're completely immune to a certain spell or ability, enemies won't use it on you, but sometimes they do. Sometimes enemies absolutely will kill themselves on you, but it's extremely rare. The reflects all electrical damage back to the source. This really isn't really why you use it. It's mostly for the electrical resistance. Um... Being able to slap this on for a Bazagal is quite useful. Slapping this on for certain wizards that you know have sequencers and triggers for chain lightnings and lightning bolts. This will absolutely keep somebody alive. Um, very, very strong. A tier all the way. Possibly S tier situationally for things like a Bazagal. Cloak on an Erring Strikes. This is a, another one of the biggest meme items in the fucking game. Giving you a plus two Thacko with your offhand. Who the... I... I'm not, I'm, I don't even want to say anything else about it. Cloak of the Dark Moon. This is a great item you acquire from Rasad's Quest and throw on a ball. Not only does this give you two bonus to armor class and saving throws, but it also gives immunity to blindness and lets you cast protection from magical ener energy three times a day. This is extremely useful. Raw magic damage in this game, like I said before magic missile, skull trap, force missiles, horde wilting. Being able to immune to Horde Wilting especially is fucking huge. And you can use this on everybody except a Wizard Slayer. Very, very strong item. Pass it around three times a day. Gets recharged on Wishes, etc. Very, very good. And it gives you yeah, just great bonuses all around. Rasad's Quest and Throne of Ball is one of the few worth doing. Cloak of the High Forest. Uh, this is the cloak that CERN gets. It's just a cloak of protection plus one that stacks with other items. It's okay. You'll end up replacing it with better shit, but yeah. Cloak of the Lich. Uh, this is an S-tier item, in my opinion. Not only does it give you cold and electrical resistance, which you then can combine with other resistances from a helmet, a shield, rings for fire resistance, and now you're completely immune to all the elements and immune to death. Uh, very, very, very strong. Unfortunately, you do have to have Nera in the party puke, and you do have to do her quest and throw in a ball, which is even more puking because you can't leave until it's fucking done, and I have died there more than once very very dangerous but this cloak is an exceptionally strong cloak for both frontline and backline s tier all the way great great cloak especially it's not just the elemental resistances complete immunity to death effects is very nice to have again especially when you're fighting ascension um amelison solars planetars balors anytime you can avoid being decapitated or hit with a finger of death a, a whale of the banshee is kind of a meme because there's no penalty but um, all the others, very, 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 very useful to have true death immunity. Up next is Cloak of the Sewers. This is potentially an S++ item just because uh, you can turn into a rat and gives you damage reduction, which will stack with other damage reduction and basically make you completely immune to physical damage at a stage where you should not be in any way, shape, or fucking form. You could also turn into a troll or a mustard jelly. Troll being completely used, it's mustard jelly definitely having uses because you do uh, max out your MR. You basically use this to turn into a rat or a mustard jelly. The only real downside I see to using this item is you will have a higher chance of being attacked by people who like to play Vermintide, which is this really garbage Warhammer game that a lot of people in Discord talk about all the time. 
they might think that you're actually one of the rats that they're supposed to kill. So you do have to watch out for that. But aside from that, this item is very, very, very strong. I typically think it's actually borderline overpowered and don't use it in my runs. I think I've used it once or twice on stream because it's potentially that good. Um, if you abuse it, this is S++ tier 100%. If you don't, it's B tier. Cloak of the Shield, absolute garbage, plus five versus missile weapons. You can stack it with the boots, like I talked about before. If you're stacking it, um, you can sometimes make use out of it. But by the time you get this again in Baldur's Gate 2, who the hell cares? Useless aside from, from the fights where you're fighting people who actually do a lot of damage with missile weapons and those fuckers don't miss. Uh, Cloak of the Stars, equally useless, possibly even more useless, because you create 6 plus 5 darts per day, and unlike Mills, which actually has a base modifier for Thacko, this doesn't. So, <sighs> even though they're plus 5 darts, you're going to miss all the fucking time on your wizards. The way Mills works is it gives you a massive Thacko modifier, and then the item itself has an additional modifiers for Thacko and damage. This doesn't modify your base, and it should, because you miss all the fucking time. Cat with the stars, uh, melts meteors once per day as a wizard of the same level as the wearer. On one hand, you're like, oh, that's cool. I can give this to a fighter and he can use this. But it they don't get a lot. They only get like five or six, I think. And then if you give it to a wizard, then I guess they can use it for a free milfs. But like level three spell slots aren't really all that uncommon anyways, unless you're using them for like protection from fire and the people you typically use protection from fire on are like airy or other people who don't have a lot of levels anyways so it's okay b tier you can definitely use it but it's not great uh the drow cloak you can acquire this in uh the utter dark gives you a nice bonus to savers breath and a huge bonus to stealth unfortunately this will dissolve upon going to the surface which makes it basically useless for anything but the utter dark and again by the time you're in the utter dark it's not as bad as sold in slr but it's still damn close like your thief should not have a uh, struggle stealthing or you should be using invis bots left and right which still makes stealthing completely useless if you could use this for uh outside of the utter dark i'd actually think this would be quite good just because the bonus is so fucking massive you can kind of plan around this and the savers his breath is perfectly serviceable too especially if you combine it with the belt later on um but yeah b tier still though because it is that good in the underdark improved cloak of protection plus two this is an s plus tier item if you do uh have jahir in your party you can actually pickpocket a couple cloaks plus two from el minster you can then combine those with the scroll of invisibility and then paste to get a, a improved cloak here which will allow you to cast imp invisibility and imp paste once per day max duration of 23 rounds and I, we already talked about this with the amulet earlier this is fucking huge imp invis is okay two ac and saving throws that's nice but you basically want this for extra and pace. This is massive. Absolutely massive. S plus tier item all the way. I make these every single one I can. I keep in my inventory and I use them every chance I get because they are so good. Now we come up to quite possibly the most RP item, I think on this entire list, which is Montolio's Cloak. So this is the cloak of the famed blind mentor of the dark elf ranger Drizzt Doerden. This is the Cloak of Protection plus one that gives you two Thacko with your offhand. And you acquire this late throne of ball. Late throne of ball. Two Thacko offhand. Cloak of Protection plus one. The Cloak of Balderan you get in BG1 and it is ten times better than this fucking cloak. This is such a slap in the face. I don't know who at Bioware hated Rangers. Like, I don't know if, like, maybe... <sighs> Maybe the actor who played Aragorn, like, tripped him and pushed him into the mud when he was a kid at school or something. He just wanted vengeance on people who like rangers. But this cloak is such shit. It's absolutely... I don't even want to talk anymore. I gotta get this off my screen. I'm mad. Fuck that cloak, dude. Nymph cloak, nice cloak of protection, plus two, charm creature, save versus breath. Enemies typically have a worse save versus breath, so you have a much higher chance of this going off. It's not quite as good as Algernon, which I believe has a penalty, but this still lasts 12 hours, just like Algernon, which is insane. And it gives you a nice uh, charisma plus two. Very useful item. You can acquire it very early on in Baldur's Gate 2. It's sold by the fat guy who handles uh, Mavar's guild. Raylar's mistake, complete meme item. You turn into a wolf at will for two turns. People have told me in the past that you should use this item on a monk because you get more attacks per round. And uh, no, it's garbage. Bender this shit. 
There's nothing you can do with it unless you're into furry role play. Maybe you're romancing Jahira and she turns into a wolf and then you turn into a wolf and then you run off into the forest together and kiss. And I mean, if you're into that, whatever makes you happy, but otherwise sell it. Cloak of Protection plus two, perfectly good. Uh, you can upgrade it to the improved cloak we were talking about earlier. That's what you want to do. Makes it an S plus tier item in and of itself, A tier. Mandurish Shadow Cloak, S plus tier item, uh, plus one to AC and saves, big bonus to hide in shadows, complete immunity to backstab, and uh, your alignment is undetectable. And this is big. The amount of enemies in Baldur's Gate who can detect your alignment and then attack you knowing that you're an evil piece of shit is huge. No, but um, getting immunity to backstab on a thief is very, very nice. The extra stealth is nice. And the extra AC in all saves is perfectly nice. You can cast improved haste on yourself with the Cloak of Protection plus two and then swap to Venduras to Shadow Cloak and now you don't have to worry about being backstabbed by enemies. Um, very, very good cloak. Might be slightly overrating it, but if you're a thief, there's no better cloak to be using, in my opinion. And for that, S plus tier. Um, arguably, Whispers of the Silence could be useful as well, but a lot of enemies see through invisibility in this game, and that's what actually sucks. N how this reads, it, it doesn't actually work this way. While hidden or invisible, the wearer is not detectable by magical means to detect invisibility and scrying. And while that's true, that a low-level wizard cannot detect invisibility on you, dragons see through invisibility... Liches see through invisibility, mind flayers see through invisibility, very high level beholders see through invisibility, most bosses see through invisibility, including all of the five. Torgal sees through invisibility for some hilarious fucking reason. Um, there are too many enemies in this game that see through invisibility. And while this is absolutely useful if you're fighting humanoids or doing some random battle against fish people, or some other enemies who can't see through invisibility, this can be useful. I will use this on Thieves in BG1 especially. I will use this for most of my run in BG2. But once you get a better cloak, you typically get rid of this because it's not really going to help you. Uh, planets are see through invisibility as well. So even if the high level mage you're fighting isn't a lich, they also see through invisibility. And every wizard's going to drop one of those in your head. There's just too many enemies that see through invisibility, making this kind of moot, unfortunately. Also high level demons as well. Sorry. I mean, the, the more I think about it, the more I uh, the more I remember how many enemies see through invisibility. It's There's a lot, unfortunately. So that item becomes a lot less useful. In practice, but it's still very fun, especially early on. All right, that's going to be it for our cloaks. It's time for our gloves. First up, we have the Blessed Bracers. This is going to be usable by Paladins. Um, I think Rangers get it as well, right? Nope, Rangers don't get it either. Well, yes, just Paladins only. Extra 10 hit points. Uh, you can cure critical wounds once per day for 27 HP, and you can res once per day um, as well. These are both useful. Um, you'd really only use these out of combat though. I would never equip this just for the extra 10 HP unless maybe on Keldorn if I was also playing a Paladin because personally I'd rather be using something that increases my damage like um, Gauntlets of Extraordinary Weapon Specialization or Gauntlets of uh, Legacy of the Masters, something like that. There's gloves that will increase your damage um, and I typically use those over the Blessed Bracers but if I have Keldorn in my party and I'm a Paladin using something else, I'll definitely slap those on them. Blazers of Blinding Strike. These drop off the uh, Quotuo Prince and the Underdark. This also gives you Impaste, but it only lasts 20 seconds. This is still useful to have because it's a couple rounds of Impaste, but this is not in any way comparable to the Cloak or the Necklace of Cheetah Speed. 20 seconds is three and a half rounds. 23 rounds is like two and a half minutes. Way longer than this. So keep that in mind. This is still B tier. It is still usable, just not as good, and keep that in mind. I'm not going to have all the bracers of AC and defense here just because most of them are useless. Anytime you cast a shield or spirit armor or any of the other spells that will set your AC, these become completely irrelevant. Uh, if you're a fighter mage or a thief mage or any other kind of mage who's using armor or even a mage that's just using Vecna or Robe of the Ark Magi, uh, this still does absolutely nothing unless you have this one, which has base AC of three, but getting an extra two AC on my wizard, woo, whoop de fucking do right? Who cares? Garbage. Only use it if you have nothing else or if you don't plan on using an armor spell. But even then, like, if your wizard's getting hit, they're going to fucking die. This is not going to stop them from dying. It's just the way it is. Gauntlets of Onzek. This is a monk item, but it can be usable on other uh, classes. You can acquire this from... Um, 
for Sod's Quest. It gives you plus three damage when attacking with fists and gives you a 15% chance, uh, chance of inflicting 1d10 cold damage with each successful melee attack. This only applies for fists, obviously, so if you're a monkey, you'll get that bonus. This part, however, applies to all melee attacks. If you're a thief and you're backstabbing and you have this equipped, you can do 1d10 cold damage when you backstab with your dagger, which is hilarious. But you can use this, but 15% chance, not a super high chance. If you have a lot of attacks per round, it's okay. If this was all melee attacks, this would actually be kind of good because then you could stick it on Mazzy, give her imp paste, and she's just going twing, 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 twing. And this is going to happen at least once or twice a round, but it's okay. Uh, if you don't have Legacy of the Masters, if you have a lot of fighter ethos um, companions, you can absolutely fit this in on somebody for sure. B tier. Gauntlets of Crushing. These are also decent. Uh, I give these A tier. This is a monk item because it's only going to give you a bonus to attacking with fist. Fourth echo, four damage. It's actually quite significant. Um, this is going to scale nicely. I personally like using uh, Gauntlets of Almzek better if I'm playing a monk, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with using Gauntlets of Crushing. The fourth echo damage bonus is quite nice, especially if I'm taking Rasad, which I typically do when I play a monk, and I would happily give this to him and take Almzek for myself. Perfectly good item. Um, again, if you're a monk, for everyone else, useless. Uh, Gauntlets of Extraordinary Weapon Specialization. This is an S-plus item. Uh, it gives you the same bonuses as the Legacy of the Master, but it also gives you an extra half attack per round, which will become one attack per round when you combine it with Impaste. Uh, you don't get this weapon until very, very late in the game, unfortunately, and there are a lot of classes who can't use it, sadly, but it is a very, very strong item. All fighter ethos are going to want it very badly. The extra half attack is huge, especially if you're a true fighter who can get Grand Mastery and a weapon of your choice, then slap this on. You're basically able to get 10 APR without ever having to use Whirlwind. Very, very strong. Especially if you're using a two-hander, because every little bit helps. Glimmering Bands. These are Rasad's uh, gloves. They get He gets from his quest at the end of Baldur's Gate 1, giving an extra two Thacko. Perfectly usable until you get one of the better gauntlets, but still not great. B tier. Gloves of Healing. Um, you get these from... Um, I think these are from the Radiant Heart quest, if you do the um, returning the stupid cup. Um, what's it called? Fallen Paladins, that's the word. Heals up to 10 points of damage and any poison effects once per day. You can use this as a quick swap to hit somebody who got hit by a mummy breath. Uh, outside of that, this is pretty fucking useless. Extremely situational niche B tier. Gloves of pickpocketing. I use these as well in most of my games. I give this to Hexat early and she goes on a stealing spree very, very early on. And that's the only time I'll ever use it. Maybe late in the utter dark, I'll give it to somebody else for the bonus. B tier, situational. Not much to say. It's just a nice little pickpocketing boost. We'll stack with all other bonuses to thieving abilities and pickpocketing. Hands of Tachic. Uh, this will set your strength to 18 double O, which is a nice boost for pretty much every companion in the game. Uh, going from 18 to 18 double O strength is a big damage boost and a couple Thacko boost. Very, very noticeable. However, this does get made into the um, into Chrome Fair, so that is something to keep in mind. If you plan on making Chrome Fair and currently somebody in your party is using this, keep that in mind. They're going to lose that. Janssen Techno Gloves, pickpocketing gloves, but also giving a bonus to open locks, usable by Jan only. And most importantly, they got style. Perfectly serviceable. I will typically put points into these abilities and then get rid of these gloves so I can give them something else, but there's nothing wrong with them. Legacy the Master is classic uh, gloves that you can acquire early on in BG1 and BG2. You, unfortunately, you don't get them until you do Bodhi the second time around. Plus one damage, or excuse me, plus one Thacko, two damage. Great for any uh, fighter class. Uh, thieves, this damage will get multiplied into your backstabs. Very good. A tier, possibly S tier because I'll always use it just because it's the only damage source outside of um, uh, Extraordinary Weapon Specialization for most fighter ethos, but perfectly decent. Paladin's Bracers, this is the basic bitch version of the Blessed Bracers. All it gives you is 10 HP. Again, I'll slap this on Keldorn, but I will typically give him the next item, the Brawling Hands, which gives him 18 dex, which is a massive Thacko boost for him. Or excuse me, uh, AC boost for him. And sometimes, if he's using uh, Fire Tooth, it will be a ranged Thacko boost as well. I'm not a big fan of the Paladin's Bracers, but I will give it to Keldorn if I'm also a Paladin, for sure. Brawling Hands, however, is an S-tier item, possibly even S+. In BG1, it's definitely S+, because you can give it to Kagan or somebody else to max their decks, which is a huge uh, AC boost early. In Baldur's Gate 2, this isn't nearly as useful. In BG2, this is more like an A-tier item, because by the time you get it, 
Uh, your AC really isn't going to be going up that much anyways. Enemies are going to be starting to hit you fairly reliably unless you're mage tanking or using something else to reduce your damage taken, in which case the AC is irrelevant. I'll still happily give this to Corgan or Keldorn or Animan when I get it, but not nearly as good in BG2. A tier in that case. Suits on Bracers. These are for Monk only. You'll get these and throw in a ball, giving an extra AC and 15 hit points. HP is great. That is a huge boost. Monks uh, have the Cleric hit point table. So they're not going to have nearly as much as the fighter ethos. Get an extra 15 HP is nice. The AC is an absolute fucking meme, but whatever makes you happy. Uh, A tier. But uh, honestly, I typically don't use them anyways because I'd rather use the other damage gloves. But again, if you're taking Rasad, you don't want them to die. Nothing wrong with giving them these bracers. Up next is the Wondrous Gloves. This is a bard-only item that can obviously be usable by uh, thieves with using the item, but who cares? Unless you're a thief mage, then you can get some bonuses here. Uh, memorize an extra level uh, 2, 3, and 4th wizard spell. Uh, 2 is okay. At this stage, you should have quite a few 2s. 3 is always nice. Um, there's a lot of level 3 spells you can use for damage. 4 is great because you get another stone skin, imp and viz, etc., etc., so you can get absolutely some use out of this item. It also gives you a Thacko and AC. This is the special item that bards get and thrown a ball. So you're not going to get it till very late, but it's a perfectly serviceable item. Uh, a tier. Xander's second sword arm. Uh, this gives you an extra Thacko. This is totally whatever. You only use this if you have nothing better. C tier item. Um, it's better than using gloves that give you AC, I guess. Like fucking, what are they called? Bracers of defense, but still not great. One thack, it was nothing. Even in BG1, this is hardly noticeable. But when you stack it with buffs and other shit, that's when it starts to make a difference. And that's going to do it for our gloves. All we got left is hats, rings, and belts, boys. Okay. Let me go and enjoy some more Mountain Dew here. And let's get back at it. First hat is the Bard Hat. This is an item that's acquired in Siege of Dragon Spear, which will import into the Planar Prison in Baldur's Gate 2, giving immunity to deafness. And silence, and the bard song lingers for an additional two rounds after the bard stops singing. If you're using rogue rebalancing, this doesn't work with bard songs because uh, RR changes the bard song script, which sucks. If you're not, this does work, and you can get around that with a fix, but you'll need uh, to use the Infinity Engine to make that happen. If you aren't, however, this will make your bard song last for three rounds right after you stop singing, um, after you start singing, which is nice. Very, very nice, because then you can cast spells, you can attack. Very, very useful and strong item. S tier, almost S+. plus. I'm not going to give it S+, plus because I use RR, and I hate the fact that it doesn't work with this without a fix. But very, very good item. You can acquire it quite early on in Baldur's Gate 2. If you are a bard, or you're taking Herdelise, and you want him to use his song, very, very strong. In the unmodded game especially, when uh, Herdelise still gets the enhanced bard song, this is exceptionally useful. Very, very good. Up next is the Blessed Leaf Crown. This is an item that drops from the Chosen of Seerik encounter, which is hilarious considering they're all evil assholes. This is usable only by the most filthy of races in Faerun. Elves. This will give you a permanent bless and immunity to disease and poison. If you are not evil and you are the pointy ear, you can use this item and it is quite useful for Demogorgon's fight. Immune uh, immunity to disease and poison is extremely strong in that situation. Outside of that, this is kind of useless, um, unfortunately. But um, if you are an elf, if you are capable of using it, very, very good. Um, unfortunately, I th actually, I, th I think Nera can use this. Um, so you can give it to her, and that's always nice to have. I'm trying to think. Jahira can use this. Herdalis can use this. I think. 99% sure. I don't know. It really... It's... Who cares? Elves. Puke. Elves. Puke. And you really only use this for Demogorgon's fight and after that never again. But for Demogorgon's fight, A tier. Otherwise, garbage. Who cares? Keep in mind, you uh, this this restriction right here disappears when you have used any item. So any thief and any bard can use it. Be you pointy-eared or not. Bronze Ion Stone gives you an extra 7th level spell. Perfectly nice item. 7th spell kind of sucks. Level 8 is what you really want, or level 6 or level 9. 7th is definitely the weakest of the higher level spells. But it's still perfectly useful. Um, if you're using um, Project Image, 
object image is amazing. Having an extra uh, Ruby Ray is also perfectly nice. If you're playing unmodded, Mordekind and Swords are exceptionally good, and this is always nice to have. But you can upgrade this item into the Circle of the Netheral, which is um, the same thing, but gives you an 8th level spell as well, and 10 HP. Much, much stronger. Very, very good. This is S tier. Um, I would actually give this B tier. It's okay, but I'd rather give um, one of my wizards something with crit immunity or something on it. Circle of Lost Souls is another roleplay item for the Shaman. Uh, it gives you an extra two Thacko, one caster level, and summon spirits are currently under the effect, constantly under the effects of the Blessed Spell. So this gives them an extra one Thacko, one damage. We already talked about that summons are trash, and giving trash an extra one Thacko, one damage does not make them not be trash. Still garbage. But Dev, what if you combine this with a necklace that gives... It's, it's garbage. The Shaman class dance just blows. Needs a rework. Please change it. Thank you. Next. Cal of Acuity. This is a ro Cal of Acuity. Excuse me. Um, this is a helmet acquired from Rogue Rebalancing. Gives you a bonus to find traps, provision, and uh, immunity to all forms of blindness and protects against critical hits. Find traps is nice, especially early on. Infravision, who the hell cares? Immunity to all forms of blindness on thieves. That's actually useful. But um, most characters don't fucking care. Um, on wizards, it'd be useful, but wizards can't fucking uh, use this unless you're in thief uh, multi-class. But really, what you use this for is the protection from critical hits. Thieves have D6 HP and are extremely fucking squishy. Being able to be immune to crits will allow them to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with enemies, and you don't have to worry about them getting one shot. Monks can use this as well. Monks' biggest weakness is, well... <laughs> We could talk about Monk's biggest weakness for days. Monk's being able to be crit is massive. It doesn't matter how much AC you have if enemies pop crit strike. You have to be conscientious of what all enemies are doing and what they're casting and what they're using in their positioning. If you're playing a Monk and you're playing... Um, and you don't have crit immunity and you don't have your other abilities up. Being crit by an Adamantite Golem will do 150 crushing damage. If you are a monk with hardiness up, you will still take almost your max HP in one hit. If another enemy hits you at the same time, or two enemies pop crit strike, you are going to be dead before you know it. This item will prevent that from happening, and for that and that alone, this is an S-tier item. Any item that gives you crit immunity, in my opinion, is S-tier. I am 90% sure that the leaf crown does as well. I'm trying to scroll down here. I know there's another stupid leaf. Okay, this one actually says it on it, so I guess the um, the Blessed Leaf Crown indeed does not give critical immunity, but it might. I'm not 100% sure for the Filthy Elves, but um, Cal of Acuity, very, very strong for that reason. Dark Veil, vale, exact same thing. Again, monks can use it as well. By the way, for some weird reason, bards can't, lol. Um, Dark Veil vale gives you an extra bonus to stealth, gives you immune to gaze attacks, and the wearer suffers a two-point Thacko penalty against creatures that employ gaze attacks. This will be Tanari, Basilisks, etc., etc. Goth, um, Beholders, stuff like that. But again, the main reason you use this is for the protection against critical hits. But it does work on gaze attacks, so in Baldur's Gate 1, when you're fighting Basilisk, this is extremely useful. This does work against the Medusa in um, Gromnir's fight if you're playing with Ascension. Uh, S-tier item all the way. Very, very good. I typically buy both. Give one to myself if I'm a thief and one to somebody else. Even if I'm not playing a thief, I'll typically buy it for Monty or Imowen or somebody like that. Dead Man's Face is the garbage item. This item is dropped from Chosen from Cyric. Gives you immunity to fear and panic and minus two charisma. I already talked about before how incredibly easy it is to avoid getting feared in this game. And you have removed fear as well. Gives you one bonus to AC and protection against critical hits. But guess what? Every helmet in the fucking game gives you protection against critical hits. So, who cares? Garbage. Deep Red Ion Stone gives you plus one dex. And even though it doesn't say it, it also gives you critical hit immunity. And for that and that alone, this is an A-tier item. This comes from uh, Rogue Rebalancing. You can acquire it in uh, BG1 or BG2 from the uh, Rogue Shop. Dragon Helm, S-tier item. Love this item. Gives you 25% resistance to cold, fire, and electricity. This will stack with uh, shields and your armor and rings. And it's very easy for you to get cold, electrical, or fire. And fire being the most important resistance to max because of it. Very, very good item. You'll acquire this in Umar Hills. Excuse me, Windspear Hills from Furcrag's Dungeon. Dusty Rose Ion Stone is garbage. This is the one that drops in um, Spellhold, I believe. From the uh, chest where you have to put the stuff back in... Uh, 
the proper things like the boots, the hourglass, etc. Gives you 1 AC, usable by anyone. Who the hell cares? It's 1 AC. Eyes of the Beholder. This is a helm that comes from Rasad's Quest in Baldur's Gate 2. Gives you plus NC. AC protects against critical hits. Not, amuse not usable by Monk, though. God forbid. Um, and it gives you some charge abilities uh, once per day. Uh, excuse me, three times per day. Uh, target is dominated, save or spell negates. Target is paralyzed, save or spell negates. Target flees in horror, save or spell negates. I never use this. Uh, there's no penalty on these. Um, at this stage of the game, you typically need to hit enemies with a Malison or a Doom if you want them to fail shit, especially something that doesn't have a penalty. If you do want to play around with this and use it with Malison, that's perfectly serviceable. But you got to remember that, like, you can paralyze or you can have a cleric cast hold person. You can charm or you can have a wizard cast charm. You can fear, or you can use the amazing warrior HLA War Cry. These abilities are just kind of underwhelming, even when they do hit. And yeah, you can be like, well, damn, you could use this on a fighter, though. Boop, 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 boop. You have better helmets. C tier. Fragment of Enlightenment, uh, A tier, simply because it gives you crit immunity. The 20 lore is totally whatever. Useful for identifying items, but basically you buy this to give one of your wizards or thieves crit immunity. Gift of Peace, another S tier item. 20 resistances compared to Dragon Helm, but it gives you an extra saving throw, which is still quite nice. Uh, you'll acquire this in um, the Planar Sphere from the cold area. Sorry, looking at the camera. In the northwest area, and uh, it's quite good. I'll happily slap this on anybody in my back line or front line, giving them their resistances. Helm of Baldran. This is a B tier item, and I I feel like I may be underrating this, but I do not like this item nearly as much as the others. I will slap this on Vicky's head or Aerie because they both have low HP, and giving them extra 5 HP is nice. But 1 Thacko, 1 AC, 1 Saving Throw, and 5 HP just does not stack up as well to me as any of the helms that gives you resistances be it helm of brilliance which gives you fire resistance helm of the rock which gives you resistance to um to basically everything and uh dragon helm which gives you 25 to fire cold and electricity i'm not a big fan of it it is perfectly serviceable especially early on this is technically the helm that corgan's using in his picture but it's just not great one thacko one save one ac five hp totally useful Totally usable, but B tier compared to the other stuff you can get. Again, I typically will put this on Vicky or Aerie and then buy them the Sensate Amulet. Now they have an extra 10 HP. And then when you give them the Con Belt, which we'll talk about later, they now have even more. But it's okay. Headband of the Devout. This is the helm that comes from Rasad's Quest and Throne of Ball. Um, this is only usable by lawful alignments, monks, and humans. You can, of course, use it with use any item. It gets around those restrictions, gives you passive bless, immunity to confusion, and once per day, righteous magic for one turn. This is going to give you an extra 3 strength and 10 HP, and every auto inflicts max damage each hit. The reason this is so good for certain classes, specifically monk, and uh, Thief, which now I think about it, only two that can fucking use it, is because you do max damage every single hit. Monks have a massive gamut of damage they can do because their base weapon does 1 to 20. So when you combine strength bonuses and other shit, you might be hitting for 20 damage, or you might be hitting for 40 damage. And Headband of the Devout is going to make a massive difference in your damage for an entire turn. As a thief, if you're going into backstab, being able to cast Righteous Magic before you do so, making sure that you guarantee max damage on your attack, which is then multiplied by five times, or seven if you're Assassin, or six if you're a thief using the short sword of backstabbing, etc., etc. Very, 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 very useful in those situations. For that, I'm going to actually give it S tier. You could argue that it's S+, plus, but I don't want to use this all the time because I'd rather have crit immunity, honestly. This is good, but I would prefer to have crit immunity for most situations. So for that, S tier. Helm of Brilliance, S tier all the way. 40% uh, fire resistance, critical hits. You also get to use Prismatic Spray, Fireball, and Sunray uh, once per day, which are perfectly nice. I don't know if I've ever used any of these. I typically only use this helm just because it gives 40 fire resist. That is fucking huge. Being able to stack that with others' fire resistance items on my frontline fighters is absolutely incredibly useful. 10 out of 10 item. Can't say enough good things about it. Helm of Turn Protection, I will typically use this on Aerie and Mazzy early on, especially Mazzy, because God forbid she gets charmed, she's going to do a lot of damage because she's always in pasted, because that's how I like to play. And that's all it does. It just gives you crit immunity and immune to charm. Nice. 
perfectly good. You can slap these on your heads when you know you're going to be fighting Bodhi and her bitches because they like to spam Dire Charm. You can slap these on people's heads when you're going up against Mind Flayers, and it's really, really nice to have. Otherwise, don't really use it all that often. I would still give it A tier just because the times where you want it, you want it, and it's good and very nice to have. But otherwise, wouldn't use it. Helm of Ops and Alignment. I don't think you can get this in Baldur's Gate 2 unless you're playing Black Pits or something. I wanted to talk about this, however, because it is something in BG1 and people ask about it all the time. If you have your alignment of an evil cleric swap to a good or a good swap to evil, it will change the way Turn Undead works. If you are evil on Vicky and put this helmet on your head, you can no longer gain control of undead. You will destroy them and vice versa if you slap this on somebody's head who is good, who now becomes evil. They will gain control of undead. And for that, it's kind of fun to play with. You could then give them other equipment that can only be used by good or evil, but you'd have to EE keep for this in, in BG2 because, like I said, I don't think it actually exists in the base game. I think it might be in Black Pits, but I'm not sure. Either way, fun item to play with, um, but yeah. Helm of the Noble gives you plus one AC and one charisma. Um, the one AC is okay. You can get this fairly early on, but it's still garbage compared to the other helms. Resistances are just way better. C tier all the way. Helm of Dumathoin, S plus tier. Maybe slightly overrating it. If you're a dwarf, though, getting the extra constitution is super nice. This gives you 3% damage reduction, create immunity, and plus one con or two for dwarves. Plus one con is great. Two for dwarves is even better. Slap this on Corrigan's head. He's going to get an extra HP per level, plus 3% damage reduction. 3% damage reduction on its own is absolute garbage. It's a complete meme. But when you're casting Hardiness and using Defender of East Haven or using this plus Abishai Hide or other damage reduction, like I said before, every point of damage reduction you get is better than the point you had before and i don't mean that like well duh it's better to have because you have more i mean like each point has a higher value the way it scales each point is progressively higher and higher and higher and more and more valuable so when you already have a lot an extra three percent could be massive so for example you can easily hit 90 percent damage reduction on a barbarian going from 90 to 93 means you now have acquired an additional 30 percent damage reduction which is huge now, obviously, the way this game works, it's not like a truncation system, so you're not going to, like, absolutely destroy damage by using this. Sometimes it won't even matter at all, but when it does, it's very noticeable, and especially when you can combine it on things like a Dwarven Defender using the Silver Dragon scale we talked about earlier from Dorne's Quest. Very, very big. Very, very strong. Situationally, S+, plus, other, uh, S plus, otherwise S tier for sure. Janssen Spectroscopes, very stylish. It literally says right now the style of the spectroscopes is so obvious it hardly needs to be mentioned, but I did want to mention it just in case you didn't know. Gives you a bonus to find traps, detect illusion, blindness immunity, and detect invisibility once per day. This is one of the few items on Yawn I always keep. This is an A tier item simply because of this right here. Having an extra free detect illusion is or invisibility is nice. The way enemies work in this game is they will start combat stealthed typically. You'll detect illusion or hit him with a true sight, and then they will immediately pop an invis spot. And now you have to sit there with your dick in your hands for a full round or six seconds waiting for you to cast another spell to detect them with this you can have one wizard detect illusion and then or true sight and then yon can use this item and immediately detect them again without wasting a detect illusion invisibility um excuse me i keep saying detect illusion my god i'm sorry detect invisibility spell very very useful does have a small radius so you do have to point and click and aim but still very very useful for that reason a tier because of that just because there are so many enemies in this game that backstab especially early on i get a lot of use out of this item keel's helmet is garbage um gives you complete immunity to all forms of panic and boost morale absolute meme um protects against critical hits cool no other helmet does that garbage item get rid of it the only reason this is ever used is in siege of dragon spear or baldur's gate one when you're stacking hp and then using Durlag's goblet which automatically fears you and even then, remove fear does the job just fine. Garbage item, skip it. Lavender Ion Stone. This is actually one of the better Ion Stones because it gives you a massive bonus of save versus death. You can slap this on somebody in your back line, but you still don't want to do it on your front line because you'd rather have crit immunity. But uh, very useful and serviceable in certain situations. And for that, I'll give it B tier. Mala Soul Stone. This is another slap in the face. Um, 
This is an evil only item that you get from actually I think neutrals can use it too, right? Yeah, neutrals can use it too. You get this by acquiring Mala Stone Stone Soul Stone by taking the evil route with Van uh evil route with Van Gogh and Marlowe and TOB. This gives you one dex, one con, and the ability to neutralize poison once per day, which heals 10 hit points, cures poison, disease, deafness, and blindness. Absolute fucking meme. You could use it on anybody technically, I think. This isn't just caster, which is okay. But unlike the Necklace of Poison immunity, which you got earlier on in Baldur's Gate 2, this is late TOB. Well, Dev, you could use it for Demogorgon. I guess you could, but, like, garbage. C tier all the way. The people that would want to use an item that gives you constitution are fighters, and they would much rather use a helmet that gives resistance and critical hit immunity, which this item does not. City and Ion Stone gives an extra con. Garbage, you get this in TOB. Who the fuck cares? Pale Green Ion Stone is actually decent. It gives me one Thacko and 10% HP. I would typically slap this on Edwin, or if I'm making a Dragon Disciple especially, because you can really get a lot of use out of that extra 10% hit points. Otherwise, this isn't really useful. If you're playing the Base Baldur's Gate game with no Mons, you can slap this on Herodelise or somebody, and this will be a nice boost for their uh, HP, and the extra one Thacko never hurts, because Herodelise's base Thacko is garbage. But besides that, B tier. Pearly White Ion Stone gives you an extra HP every five rounds. This is garbage. One HP per second is okay, but will not save you from people that are attacking you on insane difficulty double damage. One HP every five rounds is the equivalent to 20 constitution base region. If you're traveling outside and you're injured, you'll see this heal a couple HP. Otherwise, this is complete garbage. Vendor this trash. Rogue's Cowl. Uh, this is an item that is acquired from the Chosen of Syrac encounter. It gives you 1 AC, 50% hide in shadows, and allows you to cast Blur and Mirror Image three times a day. This can be used by a thief, um, by a bard, um, and it's quite good. Being able to cast Blur and Mirror Image on a thief is excellent, especially when you combine it with the other item that gives you Stone Skin and Minor Globe. This will make your thief very, very strong and very, very tanky compared to how he was earlier when he didn't have either of those things. Very nice. Greatly increases the survivability of your thieves. <laughs> and the fact that you can use it three times per day and then take it off and swap items, very good. Or an Arxorm. This is the item I was talking about earlier that gives you 50% crushing damage reduction. It says crushing resistance plus 50, but you can think of it as either way. Resistance or damage reduction. It's going to be the same thing in this particular case. If you get hit for 20 crushing damage, instead you'll take 10. You can stack this with other forms of damage reduction, like Defender of East Haven, but Abishai Hide, etc., etc., and you can easily hit 100% crushing damage reduction. Unfortunately, there aren't as many enemies in Throne of Ball that do crushing damage. Uh, most Fire Giants are going to be using axes. Uh, most Humanoids are going to be using pole arms or swords. Uh, they're in Dragons, of course, do a, a claw attack, which has slashing damage on it. There are a couple situations, however, where you'll be fighting some Shambling Mounds, Earth Elemental, since Sendai's Enclave do crushing damage. There are a handful of times where this will be used here. Uh, you get this from Gromnir's Encounter, I believe, and uh, you'll end up using it at times. B tier, though. It should be higher, um, but you'll find that crushing damage is a hell of a lot rarer than uh, slashing, piercing, and missile, especially at that stage of throwing a ball. If you could acquire this for Baldur's Gate 2, it'd actually be quite good, because golems, there are a ton of golems BG2, and they hit hard, but throwing a ball, not as good. Silver Ion Stone gives you plus one wisdom. Who the hell cares? Don't even bother. Throwing a ball. Garbage. Get rid of it. Skull of Death is great. You can acquire Skull of Death in the Underdark after you do the, um, you free the wizard who's imprisoned, do his quest, and you can either kill him. Um, I think, I don't remember if you actually get this if you demand it from him. Either way, I'm going to, you should kill him anyways because you get more fucking loot. This will give you a helmet that gives you immunity to crits and you can death spell once per day. This is really useful. All summons except Planetars will die instantly. Excuse me, I should take that back. All summons except HLA summons will die instantly. Mordekai and Sword, uh, Elementals, low-level Elementals, Creatures, etc., etc. Those all die instantly with the Death Spell. This also works on Insects. Won't work on Planetars. Won't work on the Elemental Princes. Um, won't work on uh, Solars, Devas, those type of things. But all their summons, um, low-level summons will work. Doesn't work on um, high-level Demons either. But... There are a lot of times where you want to use a death spell, not just for summons, but for creatures as well. Almost every troll in the game will die to a death spell. There is a lot of enemies who are susceptible to this, and it's very nice to have. A tier item for sure. 
Up next is Soon's Laurel Favor. This is an item that's just not usable by evil people. Drops from the Chosen of Syria. Gives you one Charisma and critical hit protection. If you'd rather have Charisma than one dex from your Ion Stone, by all means, take it and use it. But considering the other stuff you get at this stage, B tier for sure. They encircle it. This is also one of the S plus items, arguably S plus plus. In fact, I'm taking it back. This is an S plus plus item right now. Gives you a 15% higher probability that a wild surge will have a positive effect. So the things that affect wild surges uh, roles in this game are whether you're casting with reckless to Yoma or not, your base mage level, and whether or not you have chaos shield or improved chaos shield. By the time you get this circlet, you're probably 25, maybe level 30 wizard. You're going to have Imp Chaos Shield. And then you're going to slap this on your head. Which means you now have a massive chance of spells going off. Massive chance. A 70% chance of your spells working. And that is huge. Every time you cast Reckless Dreomer. That is huge. That means if you cast Reckless Dreomer 10 times in a fight for a Horde Wilting. Seven out of ten times, the Horde Wilting just goes off. Just goes off normally. Three out of ten times, you get a Wild Surge. Some of them might be bad. Some of them might be good, where you roll multiple times. I have had fights where Nira disintegrates the entire screen, or myself disintegrates the entire screen, and I literally can't see anything. Because so many Horde Wiltings have gone off, and the screen is covered. It's like there is a fucking artillery bombardment. I can't even see the screen because so much shit has gone off. And I have to wait like five seconds for it to clear to actually see if anyone's still alive. And nobody is. Likewise, you could fuck yourself so hard in the ass by using this item that you completely kill not just yourself, but your whole damn party. That being said, the chance of you doing that is greatly reduced because of just how strong this item is. A 15% probability bonus is huge, because again, it stacks with Imp Chaos Shield, which you should always have up, and your wizard level when you're using Reckless Yomer, which again, you should be using at this stage of the game. Even if you're like 25 as a wizard, or even 20, somehow you skipped all of BG2 and got this item, you're still at 60 with all that shit combined. It's just, it's just insane. Wild Mages are one of the best classes in the game at this stage, arguably the best class of the game. On par with Berserker Mages. It's so strong. So good. Beamdog really went hard when it came to making items for TOB classes. Doran's Quest items, the armors, are god tier. This helmet is god tier. Rasad stuff is okay. And I think the dude who was going to do Hexat stuff got fired or quit uh, the day he was supposed to do it. So she doesn't get anything. But surely that's an oversight. <clears throat> Eyes of Truth, this is a helmet that gives you critical hit immunity and infravision. Who the hell cares? Sell that shit. The Visage, this is the item that Dorn uh, gets from his quest in Baldur's Gate 2. A lot of people really like this item. It's definitely not a bad item. Giving you true immunity to uh, Feeble Mind, Confusion, Fear, and Charm is nice, considering especially that Dorn gets other immunities as a black guard, or you can slap this on somebody else's head. This doesn't have to be Dorn only. It just can't be used by good people. You also get Domination at a penalty, which is good. Penalty for enemies. Uh, and you also get Acid Breath uh, once per day, which is also quite good. A tier item. I don't typically end up using this a lot, but there are definitely times where I do want to have it. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. It's almost like I'm drinking Mountain Dew constantly. But I need something in my throat to keep it slippery and moist. So... Uh, perfectly good, perfectly useful item. I would say it's A tier. I think giving it B tier would be not doing it justice. I prefer having elemental resistances, but there are definitely times where this is absolutely nice to have. So, A tier. Thieves Hood, this is the hood that you get in the original Throne of Ball. Um, obviously you still can get it. It gives you immunity to backstab and poison and true sight three times per day. But with rogue rebalancing, or if you're playing with any other mods that affect thieves in any way, you're going to have better shit. And don't forget you'll have use any item at this point as well, which means you're going to be able to cast stone skin from scrolls, which means you're going to be able to wear a true helmet giving you crit immunity, etc., etc. It's okay. Not bad. B tier, but I'd rather use something else. Try Sold Staffire. This is just another walking, talking, crit immunity helmet. It does allow you to cast fine traps, knock, and invisibility perch three times per day. However, this is a hard cast. Um... So that means it takes some time. And Invisibility Purge is not the same as Detect Invisibility. These are the Cleric. This is the Cleric spell. And the Cleric one takes a long time to cast. 
So keep that in mind if you're relying upon this for casting uh, Detect and Viz. B tier, though, because the other ones are better, in my opinion. I'm pretty sure this is also the most expensive one. It's like 20,000 gold or something insane, while the others are way cheaper. Venduras is Luckstone. This is an S-plus tier item. Borderline S++. plus plus. I'm still going to leave it at S+, plus though. This gives you three luck. Have to have at least ten wisdom, and you can't be good to use it. This is something that uh, I typically like to use on thieves with using an item. Most thieves in this game have the wisdom required, except Hexat for some hilarious reason. Actually, I don't remember if Hexat has the wisdom. I know she doesn't have the int required to use Venduras' sword. Doesn't matter. I think she might be able to get this. Either way, who cares? Three luck is huge. This will almost guarantee that your backstabs are going to be doing max damage, especially if you combine it with the belt we'll, we'll be talking about in a minute, because you can't roll uh, less than a one. You're always going to roll a one, and then you're going to get a three luck, which gives you a three bonus to that. This will also greatly reduce the damage you take from magic damage, skull traps, fireballs, all magic abilities. This is just... Luck is arguably the best stat in the game, and the more you have, the better it is. It's insanely strong. With enough luck, you are basically fucking invincible. And this gives you three on one item. Super, super strong. Can't say enough good things about it. You just, all you have to do is kill Venduras. It's so easy. I don't know why we don't get this every game. Very, very strong item. 10 out of 10. Valor's Helm, arguably an S++ tier item. I'm gonna still leave it at S+, however. Um, just because, yeah, S+. Plus. This will protect against critical hits and give you 1 AC, but the reason this is so good is because it lets you Simulacrum once a day for 16 rounds. Simulacrum is the level 8 spell that duplicates your character at 66% uh, power. If you use this on Herdelise with using the item, and he casts Simulacrum with this ability, you now have a clone that can use the Enhanced Bard Song, while the real Herdelise does everything else. You can cast this on Mazzy, and now you have two Mazzies. You impaste both of them. Both of them machine gun shit to death. You cast this on two, a tank. Now you have two tanks. You cast... It's... The utility and usefulness of this item cannot be understated. No matter what you have or what you want, now you have double it. It is very, very good. The possibilities are endless. I personally like to use this on physical damage dealers like Mazzy, uh, Corgan, or myself if I'm a fighter of some ethos. I don't think this is actually that good on a thief, although you can use it perfectly fine on a thief. On multi-classes that have auto attacks, this is especially good. On something like... A thief mage, this is going to be borderline useless because you're thieving, um, your backstab levels are going to be lower, but most importantly, your mage levels are going to be lower. You're going to be missing a lot of spells. They're not going to do as much damage, etc. Where this really shines is on something that has attacks per round because attacks per round, after you're level 13, it doesn't fucking matter. You're going to have plenty of APR, and that's all that matters. The Thacko is irrelevant, too. Use this on a fighter, Mazzy, Saravok, Corgan, Dorn your main character if it's a fighter, slap in haste, buff him, and boom, now you got double damage. It's, it's nutty. Insanely good. But again, the utility, the sky's the limit with what you want to use with this thing. Two tanks? No problem. Two fighters? No problem. Two thieves? Sure. Very good. Up next, we have Wong Phase Ion Stone. This gives you 1 AC, 15 HP, and an extra HP per round. You can combine this with the other Monk Gloves and give this to Rasad to give him an extra 30 hit points which is a hell of a boost. However, no crit immunity. Keep that in mind. If you're playing the uh, unmodded Baldur's Gate, this is an excellent helmet for monks. If you're playing with mods and or you don't want Rasad to die instantly, I highly recommend not using it. Because even with 30 HP, when you get hit for 200 damage, like, whew, who cares? That's going to be it for the helms. I think all we have left is rings and belts, right? Yeah. All right, ring time, boys. First up, Battleista's Passport, S-tier item for sure. 40% uh, fire resistance. This is an amazing item I use every game. I'm changing it. No, no, definitely S-tier. S-plus is too much. Still very good. You get this in Windspear. I will always use this every single game on one of my fighters, possibly on myself for fire resistance. Very, very good. Again, we talked about this all, this guide, about how useful elemental resistance is, especially fire. Exceptionally strong. Delrin's uh, Family Ring. This is the ring you get when you're romancing Animan. That's why I included it here. S++ tier item for sure. When Animan is enchanted by your beauty and how gloriously handsome you are, he will give you this ring once you become married as a symbol of the love you share. This was once worn by his sister. This is a hell of an heirloom, and you damn well better appreciate this, my friends. 
You can't sell it. I tried. Druid's Ring. Uh, this is a ring that can be used by anyone, and it gives you Charm Animal, the level 2 druid ability that nobody ever fucking uses. Yeah, that one. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm not even going to rate it. Edventar's Gift gives you uh, free action. Very, very good. Um, you don't require this to spell hold, unfortunately. You can slap this on a monk, uh, since they can't be hasted anyways. And that's the main reason you don't slap this on everything, because free action is kind of a double-edged sword in the sense that, yes, you are now immune to slow, web, grease, and tangle, etc. But you can't be hasted anymore, which is really, really annoying. If haste wears off in combat, then you have to take this off and recast it. If you're standing in a web, you might get webbed, etc., etc., but on monks, there's no downside to using it. Or other classes that aren't being hasted at all. So, keep that in mind. Very, very useful in certain situations. A tier. Although, I'll be honest, I typically don't use them. Geminus, S plus tier item. If you're giving it to a wild mage. Otherwise, B tier item. This will double the amount of level 1 and level 2 spells a mage can memorize. Level 1 and level 2, uh, this drops from the Chosen of Seric encounter, by the way. This is completely useless. Magic Missile doesn't matter. Even with Imp Alacrity and Instant Spellcasting, throwing out a billion Magic Missiles and Acid Arrows, that's not a lot of damage. It just isn't. It just fucking isn't much damage at all. However, if you are a Wild Mage, having double the amount of Reckless Viomers is fucking huge and when that happens this is an s plus tier item absolutely insanely strong otherwise honestly you can fucking sell this who cares holy symbols um i only put the helm one here but you get one from char you get one from the gnome god for airy you get a handful of uh holy symbols that are going to be usable by that particular cleric you get one strength strength is absolutely irrelevant when you're airy if you're animate it's not bad um magic resistance five percent not bad you can stack that with other items an extra sixth and seventh cleric spell okay this is an a tier item this isn't as good as you first think because you get this at level 25 and by the time you're level 25 as a cleric you have a handful of six and seven cleric spells having more there's absolutely nothing wrong with that but considering how many you already have a tier still quite good though i will always use the the holy symbols on my clerics, but there's nothing wrong with swapping it out for Battleistas or something else, for sure. Honorary Ring of Soon, uh, you can only get this in Baldur's Gate 2 if you're a cleric. Gives you an extra divine spell, 1 through 4. Okay, totally useful. Um, in BG1, a hell of a lot more useful. Uh, level 1 and 2 spells, you typically have tons of in Baldur's Gate 2. But level 4, you might not have a lot of, especially if you have Aerie in your party. For some reason, you can definitely give this to her and she can make great use out of it. But again, you can't get this unless you're a cleric. And if you are a cleric, you're probably a true cleric, in which case you don't really need this. But if you're a multi-class, eh, you might be able to make some use out of it. Mercy Killer Ring. This is an item that can be bought from um, the Adventurer's Mart, the special shop. Gives you 20% stealth to both stealths and 20% set traps. Perfectly good ring. I use this on almost all of my assassins early on, and then I'll drop it for something better later. But uh, early on, very nice B tier for sure. I like to use it on uh, most of my thieves. I will sometimes buy it for Jan, but not often because he doesn't really need stealth, considering he'll typically go invisible because his stealth is so low to begin with. And the extra set traps is always good, but yeah. Reaching Ring. There's actually two of these you can get. One requires you to do Jahira's Quest. The other requires you to be a wizard and craft one from your apprentices. This is actually quite good because of the six level spell. Extra five, six, and seven. All those are great. There's nothing wrong with having extra spells. Six especially is the most useful, though, because of Impaste and Protection for Magical Weapons. Those are the two most used spells in the game, especially for the fight with the Melisan and getting more of those. You can never have enough. Literally never have enough. Five isn't bad, though. Lots of level five spells to use. And seven, I already talked about before, is arguably the weakest of the high-level spells, but still good to have. Nothing wrong with having a Reaching Ring. I will almost always give that to Edwin or Nera or myself if I'm the main wizard. Ring of Acuity, kind of shitty. Uh, gives you two extra level two spells, one extra level three, and one extra level four. You get this from Lavoc at the very end of the Planar Sphere. This would be really great on a bard like Herdelis, but spoiler alert, bards can't use it. You can use it when you get used any item, but again, by then, you should probably have extra spells. So. Don't really need it then, but yeah. Um, this is most useful on Airy, in my opinion. She definitely could use some extra mage spells, especially early on. But I typically do Planar Sphere towards the end of BG2. 
um, before going to Underdark. But it's up to you if you do it earlier or if you're playing unmodded and want to knock it out earlier. Getting these extra spells could be very useful for multi-classes for sure. Bring of Air Control, absolute meme. Gives Imp and Viz once per day for one turn. That is totally usable and perfectly fine of an ability. However, if this is a cast, it's not something you just touch somebody and they go invisible. You also get the Charm Air Elemental once per day. Save your spell at plus two negates. Okay. Um, I don't think I've ever used this before. Aside from, like, me first acquiring this as a little kid back in 2001. Then I would have used it, and then never again. The Imp Invisibility is totally useful, though. Even though you do have to cast it um, A tier if you're using it on a thief. Otherwise, B tier, it's okay. Ring of Anti-Venom just gives you immunity to poison. Pog. Super great. Nice. Awesome. 10 out of 10. Uh, you don't get this till pretty late in the game, but nothing wrong with having poison immunity, honestly. Again, a nice little swap. Ring of Danger Sense plus 25 Detect Traps. You won't get this until... Uh, I think this is the one that comes from uh, the Planar Sphere at the end. This is useful on Nalia. Or if you are a garbage thief and put all your points in stealth because you don't care about traps and you don't care if your party members die walking over them, then you can get use out of this. But otherwise, there's really no point to it. Kind of a vendor item. But if you are using Nalia, it could be very useful. For that reason, I'll give it B tier. Ring of Jin summoning. Uh, you can use this to summon a Jin once per day. Last one turn. Uh, Jin actually have uh, pretty decent intelligence. They're not going to go and drop a fireball on the front line when your party doesn't have protection from fire on. So you don't have to worry about them nuking you. Um, the downside is that's basically their only job is to cast lightning bolt and fireball and walk up and tank a couple hits. So it's okay. It's not great. If your party member is protected from Minor Globe or you're using the um, Limited Wish Minor Globe spell, that's actually a lot more useful. Otherwise, it's it's okay. Fun to play with. You don't have to worry about them killing you, usually, but yeah. Ring of Duplication is excellent. This is an S-tier item. Uh, this is an item that gives you 10% to hide in shadows and 1 AC. First missiles, who cares? What makes this so damn good is Mirror Image three times per day and it lasts for 18 rounds. This is almost a max level Mirror Image. Very, 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 very useful for fighters, for thieves, for monks, for anything that isn't a mage, really, who can cast Mirror Image on its own. Very, very strong. Very, very good. I will always get this, um, unless I'm being super lazy. Uh, this is, comes from Rasad's quest in Baldur's Gate 2 fairly early on. Ring of Earth Control. Just like the Ring of Air Control, you can charm an Earth Elemental with a plus two... Uh, um, they get a plus two bonus to save. This also gives you one AC base, unlike the Air Elemental uh, Ring. And you get the Stone of Flesh once per day. This could be useful, situationally. 1 AC is the reason I typically end up wearing this, because the more AC, the better. Um, you can get this in... Uh, trying to think, my brain. Diarna's Keep, fairly early on. And it just gives you a nice little 1 AC. And you can, if somebody gets uh, turned rock hard, you can make them soft fairly, fairly quickly and easily with this ring. Nice to have. Ring of Fire Control, easily the best. 50 fire resistance is fucking massive. Again, being able to stack it with other items like Drizzt Scimitar, the other rings, the helmets, etc., etc. Huge. But most importantly, burning hands once per day. Pug. You also get Flame Strike, which is okay. Um, Charm Fire Elemental, again, just like the others, they get a bonus to saving. The reason you wear this is for the 50% fire resistance, and that is fucking huge. S tier item all the way. Very, very strong. You acquire this in the Mind Flayer area in the Underdark. Ring of Gex, S plus item, arguably S plus um, plus. You require this from Kangax, gives you two AC and saves, stacks with all uh, protection items, uh, gives you 10 MR, regenerates one HP every three seconds, which is one of the best in the game, and complete immunity, disease, and poison, which can then be quick swapped to somebody for Demogorgon, and also gives you a 12 hour invisibility, and imp paste three times per day. However, it is a 10 second imp paste, which is trash. However, if you if you need it, this is an instant one. It's not like you actually do the casting animation of Impaste like some other items do. Incredibly strong ring. I always give this to my character because of these um, immunities and resistances here. Again, you can use this as a quick swap for Demogorgon, uh, for mummies. Um, can't say enough good things about it. Easily the best ring in the game. Um... Tied with Geminus if you're a wild mage. If I was a wild mage, I'd use this in Geminus. 100%. Incredibly strong. Um, in the original game, just going to mention it because people 
say in the comments if I don't. You can pickpocket it and then kill Kangax and then I'll drop another so you have two, but that bug has been fixed. Ring of Picklocks, uh, you can acquire this fairly early in Baldur's Gate 2. Um, this is acquired in Aaron Linvale's lair, I think, and it gives you 25% Picklocks, Pog, B tier, C tier, honestly. Sell it. Ring of Regen, regenerate one HP per round. You can pickpocket this off Rybald. Keep in mind that Ring of Gax gives you two HP per round and two all saves and all AC. Also gives you impaced three times a day, invisibility once per day, and complete immunity to poison and diseases. Yeah. Ring of Regeneration is garbage. Even in the base game, one HP per second is terrible. On double damage, enemies are going to be hitting you for 25, 30, 40, maybe even 50 damage a swing. Uh, in Bald in uh, Baldur's Gate, throwing a ball, fire giants are going to be hitting you for 80 damage a swing before mitigation. One HP per round is fucking nothing. It's garbage. If you combine this with Ring of Gax and Axe the Unyielding, and you have Impaced on, and a true regeneration spell from a cleric, and your offhand is Black Razor which is also healing you. <sighs> you get the idea. Maybe if you're stacking this with a million other things, it's okay, but in and of itself, garbage. Ring of Spell Turning. You'll acquire this in the Underdark when you kill um, Matron Mother. Uh, you get this with the Gorgon Plate. Uh, gives you minor spell turning once per day. Lasts for 15 rounds until four level spells have been rebounded. Perfectly serviceable, perfectly useful. Um, for low-level spells, nice to have. Not particularly amazing, but still useful. B tier. Ring of the Princes, I just have it here. Um, just as a ring plus one. Uh, we also have the Guard's Ring, which is a ring plus two. And we should have... Where's Io's Ring? Warden Signet, ring plus three. Warden Signet is acquired from the Game of Chance with the Demon and Watcher's Keep. Guard's Ring can be acquired from a handful of places in BG2, as is the Ring of Princes. I will use a Ring of Protection on every single character. It's always nice to have extra saves on everybody, whether they're a fighter, a wizard, a thief, whatever. You want to use whichever one you have that's the best. Keep in mind, you can only use one because of the way protection items work. You can't actually stack them. Although there are tweaks that allow you to stack them if you do slash are interested in such a thing. But typically, you just use whichever one's the best. Ring of the Ram is um, a 5v6 magic on use ring that pushes the targets away from you. Uh, kind of like a wing buffet. Um, I don't believe there's a save for this. Yeah, there's no save. At least it doesn't say there's one on here. So this is a decent amount of damage and knocks it away. This won't work on things like dragons. Anything that's too large to be knocked back, this doesn't do anything. Just like smite doesn't work. But still very, very useful in certain situations, especially on your back line. If someone's about to get pounded, you can use the Ring of the Ram and knock them away. B tier for sure. Claw of Kazgaroth. I fucking hate this item. This item would be good, but the fact that you reduce constitution and give you a penalty for a save versus death just makes this item garbage. I will occasionally pick it up in Baldur's Gate 1 if I plan for it by going 18 con and even then getting extra saves for a spell is good we already talked about why Saver's Breath Polymorph and Wand are completely useless Wands, you can count on one hand how many wizards in BG1 and 2 combined use wands Polymorph only works for petrification from Basilisk and one other wizard spell every other time it's Saver's spell Saver's Breath does work against dragons, but chances are if you're getting breathed on and you're crossing your fingers for a save, you're fucking dead. The useful thing here is Saver's spell, extra AC, and four verse missiles. Four verse missiles is useful early on, but not useful late unless you're stacking with multiple modifiers. And all in all, being more susceptible to poisons, decapitations, and losing HP unless you plan for it accordingly. I hate this item. It's garbage. C tier. Uh, Spectre's Ring. This is just a ring that gives you Imp and Viz once per day. Perfectly useful. Uh, lasts for 12 hours, although the Imp and Viz part does not last for 12 hours. The Invisibility part does, but you don't get the plus four saves. That would be too cool. Uh, the Victor. Uh, this is just another, uh, ring that will do damage to a target. Um, this is the area of effect one. Um, kind of like, uh, Agonizer Scorcher. So you don't want to have somebody standing in the way. Uh, but it doesn't do that much damage. It's only 2d6. Perfectly cool. Perfectly useful. But it's better to cast a spell. Venduras' Ring of Concealment. Where is unaffected by Detect Invisibility. Invisibility Purge. True Seeing and similar divination spells. Which remove invisibility. So just like the cloak. However, this also lets you cast Mass Invis. The level 7 wizard spell that gives everybody in your party Imp Invis once per day. Quite good. For that reason. However, I will say it again with the caveat. Imp Invis is a double-edged sword. It gives you and your party members plus four AC and plus four saves. However, 
If somehow they get CC'd or they need a heal, you can't target them. Keep that in mind. If you are invisible from imp invisibility and you're at half HP and you yell, Vicky, I need a heal, come heal me. She's like, I can't see you, bro. Planetars, however, can still heal you because they see through invisibility. So if you need help and you have imp invisibility on, a planetar is the only thing that can save you. Keep that in mind. This is still a good ability, though. But again, double-edged sword. And now we're on the last two items. Belts and shields. There aren't too many of either. Mm, excuse me. Let's start with the belts. Blazing Glory. This is an item added by Rogue Rebalancing. Give you an extra bonus for his undead. And any undead who strike you have to save or take fire damage and be blinded. And you can sunfire once per day. This is the upgraded version with the shield of a monitor, giving you 4 AC as well. Perfectly good. Nice bonus for uh, thieves. If you are playing a swashbuckler or another thief who gets uh, extra AC bonus and you want to go for a big dick uh, AC build, this is very nice to have early on. Sunfire is totally usable. And when you're fighting the undead in the Unseeing Eye in Cavern especially, um, there's a lot of undead there. This is totally nice to have. B tier. Buckler of the Fist gives you immunity to hold person. That's the only thing that it's got going for it, unfortunately. It doesn't give you any protection at all against mis uh, missile or piercing attacks, just like all bucklers. AC3, garbage. Dark Steel Shield gives you 10% to all resistances and a massive AC bonus of 5 and plus 1 for its missile attacks. You'll acquire this late and throw in a ball from uh, Sendai. Totally useful shield. Okay. I personally like using the other shields that give you more elemental resistances than 10 to, say, poison, which doesn't really help you all that much. I'd rather have 25 fire than 10 poison. It's okay. Delrin Family Shield S++ tier simply because of protection from normal missiles. I'm kidding. This shield's perfectly good, though. 30% fire and cold, 2 AC, and I'm not even going to talk about normal missiles. This is an animate-only shield, but 30% to fire and cold and 2 AC is perfectly ser serviceable for the first half of Shadows of Om. Dragon uh, Scale Shield. This one uh, is 25 to cold, fire, and electricity and 3 AC. You acquire this from Furcrag's Dungeon. This is one of the shields that I'll use all the time. A tier for sure. Great shield to stack with other elements, uh, elemental resistance items. Drow Shield plus 3. I never use this. This is an item that drops on the Underdark, giving you an AC plus 4. But considering this is one worse and also gives you 3 elements, why would you ever use a Drow Shield? Garbage. Fortress Shield, just as bad, if not worse, considering this gives you the same AC as the Drow Shield with an extra plus 7 burst missile attacks. It's super expensive and requires 15 strength and is sold at the same shop that sells the Reflection Shield. You know, the shield that reflects missiles back at the people who shot them. You know what's better than having a bonus for his missiles? Being immune to missiles and making the missiles hit the person who shot them. And this also is insanely cheap compared to the Refle compared to the Fortress Shield. I love the idea of a big dick tower shield, but this needs way more AC than what it has right here. Garbage. Don't ever use it. Kazra Shield, you can acquire this from uh, Nearest Quest and throw in a ball. This is actually quite decent because you can use this for a Bazagal's fight. And there is a handful of electricity damage after this. Also gives you 5 AC, which is one of the highest of shields. And you can chain lightning once per day. This is a meme. This is okay. You use this for the electricity resistance. It's quite good in that regard. And for that, it's an A-tier item. Kills Buckler. It's a buckler that gives you plus one dex. You can absolutely use this for certain uh, um, characters who have high dex but don't have 18. And you can use this to give them an extra AC when otherwise they normally couldn't. This also has no strength requirement whatsoever, so you can use it on pretty much everybody. Liar Progression. Uh, it's still C-tier, though but I'm not a big fan of it. I might use it in BG1 and like Monty or somebody, but giving them extra thieving abilities, but that's it. Liar Progression. This is a rogue rebalancing item that you can acquire for bards, giving them an extra two levels, uh, level two slots and one extra level three. This is nice early. However, this goes in your shield slot, which means no offhand. So you can't use a real shield and you can't dual wield. For certain situations, this is going to be more useful, knowing that you have those extra mirror images or that extra protection from fire. But generally speaking, I don't use it. It's kind of expensive too, but it is situationally useful. So for that, B tier. Pelon Shield, great in Baldur's Gate 1 when it gives you 3 AC and a bonus for its missiles. Garbage in Baldur's Gate 2. No reason to ever buy it. Reflection Shield, I just talked about it when we were talking about the Fortress Shield. This is actually S plus tier for two reasons. One, um... Illusara the Quick in Baldur's Gate, uh, TOB with Ascension, 
is changed to an archer type character, which does enormous amounts of range damage. And Solars and Ascension, when you're fighting a Melisan, also attack with the spelling arrows. Oh, also the Chosen of Syric encounters another one where enemies will attack with the spelling arrows. This is game changing for those fights. Literally game changing for those fights. It, I wouldn't say it will trivialize the encounter because it absolutely won't. But for those enemies in the ad encounter, they are almost completely neutralized. And that is fucking huge. S plus tier item for sure. For those situations alone, it is god tier. Do be careful, however. If you're playing an archer and you get mind controlled and you're attacking one of your party members who has this, you will kill yourself on it. That's only happened to me like three times though, so it's okay. Rogue's Ward, this is another rogue rebalancing item. This is the upgraded version, which gives you plus three to all saves versus death, bonus to hide in shadows, and imp and viz three times a day. This is the hard cast version, so you don't just instantly disappear, but still quite useful. Decent AC bonus of four as well. Um, situationally, I will use this at times for the imp and viz, and sometimes for the save versus death bonus. It's okay, B tier. Safeguard, this is a crappy uh, buckler that gives you a uh, sanctuary once per day and passive bless. Garbage. Sanctuary is a hard cast. If you need Sanctuary, you need to do it before, not after. Garbage. Saving Grace. This is the item that you get from um, the Unseeing Eye quest from a Monitor. Gives you 4 AC. And that's it. Woo! Sentinel. 5 AC. You buy this from the Underdark, from the Drow. Shield of Balduran, 4 AC, minus 1 strength, but you reflect Beholder Rays. In the base game, this is one of the most overpowered items in the game, period. Because Beholders and Goths and Hive Mothers are arguably the most overpowered creatures in the game, bar none. They are obnoxious to deal with, they are even more obnoxious in SCS. In SES, however, they have a telekinetic ray that they can use to snatch this thing out of your hand. Which to me is ridiculous, because, like... The way you hold this shield, there's a sling that you put your arm underneath it. There's no fucking way that happens. I'm holding it with both hands like this. It ain't coming out. But for some reason, they're still able to do so. And that means this item is now gone. However, it is still useful because they don't always use their ray. Sometimes they don't use it at all. Um, but they almost never use it immediately. So the first barrage of like one to two seconds, you can use this and reflect some rays or at the very least avoid getting hit yourself. And that is nice. That is good to have. But uh, don't rely on it like you do in the base game. Shield of Fire's Call. This is a shield we pick up and use all the time. You can acquire this from Nearest Quest early on in Baldur's Gate 2. This gives you 10% to Fire, Cold, Acid, and Electricity, which is okay. Not as good as others, but you also get 5% MR for your entire party, 3 AC, and spell turning once per day for 45 rounds. 12 levels worth of tar uh, spells targeted at the user. Spell turning is a higher level mage spell. It's not like the ring that gives minor spell turning. This is very useful, lasts very long, MR for your whole party, and still gives you decent AC and a little bit of resistances. Great shield, S tier all the way, maybe S plus. Might be underrating it. It's great. Giga Jet, excellent. Shield of Harmony, I never use this with the exception of the Chosen of Syric fight. I will always equip this on the main character because the fight starts with the enemies throwing out a sequencer, or excuse me, a spell trigger that does uh, Malison, uh, Chaos, and something else. And this will guarantee that you don't get confused by the chaos. I will always use it for that fight. And then I think I never fucking touch it again. But because it is so critical for that fight to have, I'm going to give this an A tier. And it is absolutely usable in Aerie and somebody else in your party to avoid being hit by confusion and domination, etc. I just prefer resistances because you can just cast chaotic commands in advance. But if you need it and you got it, you're going to be really happy you have it. Shield of the Falling Stars, again, perfectly useful in Baldur's Gate 1 and Baldur's Gate 2. Bonus for missiles, garbage, who cares? Shield of the Lost, this is the shield you get from Umar Hills for negotiating with the go uh, Ogres. And you'll get 3 AC and 5 MR. You can use this on Vicky to get the extra MR, um, because she can actually hit 100 MR fairly easily. But keep in mind, Shield of Fire is Call gives 5 MR to your whole fucking party. And the same AC. And 10 Resist All. And Spell Turning. So, like, yeah. Shield of the Order. This is the shield that drops off uh, Yagashura. Gives you 5 AC, plus 1 all saves, 
and somehow only requires nine strength. So almost everyone can use it. The AC is good. The saving throws is okay. I personally prefer elemental resistances, especially at this stage of the game, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with that shield. B tier for sure. The Guardian is a rogue rebalancing shield that scales with level. Um, and this will go from 5, 10 to 15 HP based on how strong the druid is that's using it. You also get a little bit of HP per round and you can summon a shambler. The shambler also grows in power as you get stronger. This is druid only, by the way. Um, but you don't control it. It's like summoning a demon. It won't attack your party. You'll only attack enemies. But you have zero control over it. And I've seen it be so fucking useless every time I've used it. I have a hard time rating it highly, honestly. All right, almost done. My throat is so hoarse. I apologize for apologize for that. And lastly, uh, we have the stalwart defender. The wielder receives an additional plus two bonus to AC versus giant humanoids. I don't know the definition of this, and I apologize. I know for a fact this should work for giants. I'm pretty sure this works for trolls. I'm pretty sure this should work for his demon knights and a handful of other creatures that are giant and humanoid. When I think of a humanoid, I think of two limbs up here, two limbs down there, a head, torso. Yeah, right? Two legs, two arms, humanoid in nature, right? Logically, a giant humanoid is anything that's bigger than a human, which is a decent amount of enemies in this game. But we all know that's not how this is coded. And even then, even if for some reason everything in this game is coded as a giant humanoid... It's still only an extra 2 AC, making this an AC 4 shield. Garbage. Don't ever want to use it. And now, we're in the last part of the video, my friends. The belts. Thank you for sticking with us this long. I hope you're having a great day. Here we have the Belt of Inertial Barrier. This is an S plus tier item I pick up and use every single game. Five to save for his breath, which is perfectly nice. Resistance to missile damage, which is great. But most importantly is resistance to magic damage, which will stack with Court Hala's armor that we talked about earlier. We'll also stack with damage reduction from Armor of Faith, etc., etc. Um, and again, this is raw magic damage. So Magic Missile, Skull Trap, Horde Wilting, Force Missiles, that sort of thing. Very, very strong. 50% damage reduction is huge. This will basically, if you are at full HP and you get hit with a Horde Wilting, this should pretty much prevent you from dying no matter what class you are. And that is big. Obviously, it's better to have protection from Magical Energy and take zero, but this is still very, very strong. S tier all the way. The Saver's Breath is actually kind of useful versus Wing Buffets versus Dragons because it's such a big bonus in addition to the others. But this is obviously the least consequential. This is the biggest. This is also decent. Very, very good. Uh, belt of mi uh, Minor Invulnerability. You can use this uh, once per day to give you a Minor Globe on any character, which is quite nice. And every time you get hit, there's a chance you get a Minor Globe for two turns. This is completely irrelevant. Uh, you can count on a hand how many times this is going to happen. Um, but being able to use this once a day is nice. Throw it on a Thief or somebody who's going to be frontlining up front or a Monk. And you're worried about them getting popped by a stray Fireball, any Bolt, etc., etc., Perfectly great to have A tier for sure. Belt of the Skillful Blade. This is an item that imports from Seizure Dragon Spear into Baldur's Gate 2. And I have a mixed mind on this. On one hand, you look at it and you're like, 10% slashing damage. Oh, that'd be cool. I could use that with a thief and do big dick backstabs for 10% more. But if you're backstabbing for 100 damage, this makes you do 110. You know what I mean? And if you're a fighter that's hitting for 20 every swing and you attack five times per round, now you're hitting for 22 and you're doing an extra 10 damage around. That's not useless. But considering that the belt we just talked about giving you 50% damage reduction from raw magic, it's hard to really find a place for this belt, honestly. And if you're a thief, there's another belt we'll be talking about in just a minute that's so much fucking better. You also get two off, uh, uh, two Thacko bonus offhand, though, Dev, for blades and swashbucklers. Yep. <clears throat> I want to like this item, but I'm going to still leave it at B tier because it is going to increase your damage, right? I use Legacy of the Masters all the time because it increases my damage, even though it's only by two damage. But this, you, you're giving up a really good belt for this, and that's hard to justify. Destroy the Hills, a uh, massive boost versus crushing attacks. Obviously useful versus golems, that's basically it. Um, you also have Elves Bane, which is for missile and piercing attacks, and uh, the Girdle of Ernst for slashing attacks. If you're doing a AC build 
on your main character or some other character where you're trying to maximize AC, you're going to want to use these belts for whatever situation entails and requires because modifiers are the way your AC gets high, 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 high. And Baldur's Gate 1, um, honestly, you find good use out of all of them. There are a handful of golems and a handful of ogres in BG1. So Destroy the Hills gets a lot of use in Baldur's Gate 2. Uh, golems are going to be the main use of this. Elves Bane, this will work for backstabs and um, ranged attacks, obviously. Girdle of the Ernst is obviously the best, even in BG1. Slash uh, damage bonus is definitely the most useful. Most enemies attacks with slashing. You'll get a couple of these from uh, Chosen of Cyric, and there are a handful of other spots that drop it as well. Overall, useful bonuses, not particularly amazing. If you're AC, if you're using like Abishai Hide, for example, you don't give a shit about Girdle of Ernst or any of these. If you're using something that gives you super garbage AC, but gives you good resistances, you don't care because you're probably going to get hit anyways. These are good if you're going an AC build. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Girdle of Fortitude and the base game. If you have this equipped, you have 18 con. The new one lets you uh, an SES. You can use this to set con to 18 once per day and then unequip it and take something else. So you can use this on Aerie, Herdelis, Vicky, give them 18 con, and then you would give them a strength belt, which makes this much, much better than it used to be, in my opinion. So for that, A tier item, borderline S tier, but uh, very, very strong for sure. Master Belt of Fortune. This is the belt I was talking about for Thieves earlier. The Master Belt in, the, in um is an item that comes from Rogue Rebalancing. You can buy it early on. It gives you 10 open locks, disarm traps, and set snares. And you can upgrade it and throw in a ball with a handful of... Um, I think it's just a luck scroll, actually, and something else. And it gives you a permanent plus one luck and uh, a higher bonus to open locks, disarm traps, and set snares. Just like we talked about with Venduras' luck stone before and the, other, um, the Black Cat Claw that you can acquire that also gives you luck, these luck bonuses stack... To a ridiculous level. If you're using Venduras' helmet, the Black Cat Claw, and the Master Belt of Fortune, and you're attacking with a short sword, you now do max damage on every swing, ever. Because you have five luck. So even if you roll a one, that one's gonna get boosted to six, guaranteeing you do max damage. If you're attacking with a long sword, you will almost never not do max damage. And if you're attacking with a katana, you will do max <laughs> You'll do a lot more damage than you will normally. You never, ever have to worry about backstabbing for 12 again. You know what I mean? Luck is very, very nice to have on Thieves. It will also greatly reduce the damage you take um, from magic. Luck is a great stat. Getting this on yet another item that stacks, super, super good. S tier all the way. Not quite as good as Venduras' helmet, in my opinion. That's definitely S+. Plus. Well, this deserves only S because it's one luck, but still very, very useful. Oxtail Belt gives you a bonus for his missile attacks. Uh, I have it here just because um, you get this earlier than Elves Bane. Uh, this can be acquired from Rasad's quest right out the gate. Actually, I think you get an Elves Bane stupidly early too, don't you? That doesn't matter. Who cares? Oxtail Belt, same shit. Unless you're doing it on purpose to stack a particular AC for a particular enemy, it doesn't matter. And then finally, we have the Strength Belts. I didn't put them all here. You have Stone Giant, Hill Giant, um... Fire Giant. I'm missing a giant. There's one more giant out there. But these are going to boost your strength. Extremely useful. Um, you want to give these to your fighters first and foremost. It's going to help their thacko. It's going to help their damage. There is no fighter in this game aside from Saravok and Dorn, who has uh, 18 and 19 uh, double O strength. Um, Keldorn, I think, has 17. Herdelis, I think, is 17. Uh, Animan, I think, is 18, 12. Uh, Corgan has 18, 80 something. So his is up there, but either way, most people in this game are going to be greatly boosted by a strength belt. They're going to get a good Thacko boost, but most importantly, they're going to get a big damage boost. Typically, characters like Herdelis and Jahira are going to have their damage almost doubled. Strength belts are amazing. S tier item for sure. You're going to want to use them on everybody if you can. It's even useful in your back line. Give this to Vicky or even Animan, even though they can boost their own strength. It's still nice to have. Very, very useful shit for sure. And that's going to do it here, boys. I do appreciate you all watching. I apologize. Things are a little bit rushed and my voice is a little bit shitty. 
That's what happens when you record the same fucking video twice and spend six hours doing it like a complete fucking idiot. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope each and every one of you dudes has an awesome day and an awesome night. And remember, my friends, no matter what happens in life, you're the best there ever was and ever will be. I love you, God loves you, and you could do anything in life, my friends, and don't you ever forget it. If you're interested in having a discussion, feel free to post it down there in the comments, and I'll respond to it at some point in the next two years, because honestly, I don't give a fuck if you disagree with me. I'm kidding. I love you guys. Feel free to post stuff in the comments. I always read the comments. I am bad about responding to them as of late, and I apologize. I'm going to get better at that, because new and improved dev does everything he says he's going to do. Thanks for watching, guys. God bless. We'll see you next time. Have a nice day.